call this meeting to order of the Whitley Select Board on Wednesday, August the 8th at 6.05 by that clock p.m. Um, before we get started, I would like to, uh, without a script in front of us, so I will extemporaneously mention that the third Select Board member is um, far too removed geographically to attend in person, so she is joining us via Skype and, and conference call. Um, and I think that satisfies that need. Um, so, I can, can you hear us? I can hear that, yeah. Great, great. So, um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of July 25th, 2018. Second in motion. Uh, all those in favor, and we need a voice vote because of the remote access. Joyce? Uh, in favor. Brad? Yes. Me, yes. Okay, um, second thing, are there any comments from the public that are not related to the adult entertainment license? And again, are not related to the adult entertainment license? Anything at all? Town Hall. <coughs> Whatever, okay. Hearing none, I will move on. Um, we need to, the language to reopen the hearing that was continued from two Wednesdays ago. It's on the back. Is it on the page? Oh, thank you. Uh, notice is hereby given to the select board is continuing a public hearing on the request for a variance from chapter 62, section A of the Whitley General Bylaws, which requires that a police officer be on duty when entertainment is scheduled at a premises with a liquor license. The address of the subject property is 226 State Road, Whitley, Massachusetts. The public hearing uh, will be continued and is being continued on August 8, 2018 at 6 p.m. at the Whitley Town Offices located at 4 Sandy Lane in Whitley, Massachusetts. Uh, Select Board, uh, Jonathan Edwards, Chair, Licensing Authority, Town of Whitley. Um, I have crafted a what I consider a, a, a middle ground proposal um, that will allow the town and the new owners of the castaways to move forward with restrictions in place um, so that we as a town can best understand and be comfortable with um, their ability to run an adult entertainment business uh, while preserving the public health and safety of the residents of Waitley, of uh, the patrons of the castaways, and of employees, any employee, any and all employees of, of, the, the, of the castaways. Uh, I did this, and, I, and I, we all talked about it at the last meeting, um, because we've all heard the, the constitutionality of adult entertainment places, uh, but we also have heard, and I concur with, the, the concerns about public health and safety, um, what goes on inside the building and on the footprint outside of the building. Um, I don't know whether, and, and we posted the, we posted the, what did we post first, Brian? A few, uh, probably a little less than a week ago, as promised. The motion. The, 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 um, Your proposed motion. The proposed motion for the variance. Um, and if I can go to it here, Amy takes very copious notes, so I have to get to, sorry, thank you. Um, so I'll read the motion. What I'd like to do is read this motion and then discuss a, a, an, an amendment to the safety uh, plan that was originally crafted between our chief and uh, the attorneys for um, Whaley LLC 
um, because again, it's all, it's all packaged, but we're treating it separately because they are separate functions. Um, the motion that I propose and that I've shared with the town and I've shared with my two colleagues reads, I move the select board grant a variance from chapter 62, section eight of the Whitley Code to Whitley Investments LLC subject to the following conditions. The variance shall be a four month probationary period um, with the clock starting to tick after you guys reopen, after your whatever steps you need to take to, to be ready to go. Um, it wouldn't start, the clock wouldn't start tomorrow because nothing's gonna be different tomorrow and I'm using tomorrow as, a, as just an example. Um, four month probationary period <coughs> commences operations after completion of purchase from Demetrius Kalsinopoulos uh, DBA Castaway Lounge. During this four month probationary period, the variance shall not apply to the following times during which the licensee shall arrange for at licensee's expense, a uniformed police officer who is approved by the Waitley Police Chief to be present at the licensed establishment. Uh, and this would take the administrative burden off of our chief to find that officer and on to the owners of the castaways to find that officer. But you would need to have the approval of, of the Waitley Police Chief. Thursday, 9.30 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. Friday morning, 1.30 a.m. Friday, 9.30 p.m. to Saturday morning, 1.30 a.m. Saturday, 9.30 p.m. to Sunday morning, 1.30 a.m. One hour before and one hour after a special event as described in paragraph three below. A special event is defined as any entertainment or performance of the Whitley Police Chief in his discretion and after consulting with the licensee's director of security reasonably determines may draw a crowd in excess of the capacity of the licensed establishment. Uh, and essentially that would mean the line out the door because obviously we can't, there wouldn't be the possibility of going over 95 but it would be when there's a line out the door and so one person replaces a, a person exiting and, and how, to, how to handle that, that small or long line um, so it's not drifting down, down 510. Um, the select board shall review the licensee's operations under the terms of the variance at its second monthly meeting of every month during the four month time period for the purpose of evaluating safety and security at the licensed premises and to consider whether the variance should be continued in effect, modified or rescinded. At the end of the four month period, the select board shall meet and decide whether or not to continue the variance in its then current form, grant a new variance with or without conditions or rescind the variance. The licensee's director of security shall meet with the Whitley Chief of Police on a weekly basis during the four month probationary period to review operations under the security plan required as a condition of the licensee's entertainment license to evaluate any security related incidents that may have occurred at the establishment and to establish any modifications to the security plan or other operational changes necessary to protect the public health, safety, order, and welfare. Um, that is my motion for the, var the, the variance request to the current code um, on the Waitley books. Um, in addition to that, I have requested that the amendment, or that the um, security plan as offered uh, include, do we have that language, Brian? So I don't misspeak. You want to read it or you want me to read it? Are you talking the sum you talking the summary or the whole plan? No, this is just a, an addition to the whole plan. Well, that's your, that, David, that's your language. Is that okay to read? <clears throat> yes. It will be okay. Uh, let me just find it here. Uh, as we all know, part of the security plan that was crafted and negotiated by our police chief and uh, attorneys for the Castaways LLC includes video footage internal and external of the building. Um, we discussed last time that, that the external video would always be available and we had a discussion about the importance from my perspective and, and others um, that the internal video also be available. Uh, and so I am uh, suggesting an amendment be added to that security plan uh, that's, that states interior CCTV footage will be made available to the Waitley Police Chief upon his reasonable request to law enforcement, to other law enforcement through proper judicial procedures or at the discretion of the castaways management. Uh, so essentially 
the interior footage, the, the interior video footage um, would be available to the police chief and only to the police chief, and he would not um, be sharing that with anyone unless he saw, he saw um, reason because of actions that he saw on the videotape um, that believed, he believed would rise to, um, to the point where uh, further action uh, from a legal perspective or from a security uh, perspective needs to be, needs to be taken. That's the, those, are the, those are the changes that I'm suggesting. Um, I would open it up to the board first, the board first for their comments. Um, and again, my goal here was to find um, a common ground knowing what the realities of the situation are. Um, so, Joyce or Fred, you want to, you want to, you want to let, it's up to you, who wants to speak. Oh, okay, I'll go first. I, I guess I have some comments or questions on, on which, on your motion. Uh, I guess I'm not sure that we, we really need a four month probationary period. Four months from whatever, today or or, or next month is going to put us in January, February time period. This, the license we already approved is going to be come up for renewal in January anyway. So it's going to be discussed in January, which is three, four months from now, or 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 or, or December, whatever. Uh, I guess I don't I don't see the need to have a discussion to renew the license. Whenever it is, and then four month, uh, four month period, whether it's a month or two or three after that, to talk about it again. I think we're we're uh, talking the thing to death to keep doing it twice. Uh, I don't see a need for a probationary period. We we can the the bylaws say we can we can terminate the license anytime we want. We don't need a probationary period. That can happen the first week they're open, first month they're open. We don't need to wait for four months to do that. Okay, Frank, uh, could, I, could I help clarify something? The probationary period is the duration that we would have a police officer, a police detail on premises during those four hours, three nights a week that was discussed. It's not, it, it, it's, it's a probationary period for, for the, for our secure, for the security system to get its feet wet and for the owners to demonstrate and, and, and actually it gives them a lot, a lot of cover that, that it's gonna be a, a smooth probationary period. Um, it's, it's not, I, I guess I'm confused what well, you're. I, okay, I, I guess I didn't read it that way, but, but thinking about what you said, yes, uh, I, I guess I could see that for, for these hours that we're saying they should have a uh, uniformed police officer for the four months. But you also further on talk about a uh, four month time period where we're gonna be every, every uh, second meeting in a month, we're gonna be reviewing the license again. Uh, that's four more meetings plus the annual meeting, five more meetings in the next four months to talk about this issue. Uh, I, I don't think we need, we need to wait till the, the second monthly meeting of the month to, to hear what's going on. That should happen anytime, anytime our police or uh, chief of police or, or even their director of security has something they want to change either on the security plan or, or something uh, uh, or an incident occurs or something that they want to explain and bring to the board, that should happen at any time, not wait till the second meeting of the month. I think that's that's waiting too long. Well, and, and I guess the reason that language is crafted the way it was is that, yes, of course, if an issue arises where we need to have a meeting with the castaways security chief, uh, the owners, our police uh, chief, whomever, that can happen any time, but this right. would at a minimum require an update an update conversation about how things are going, <coughs> what issues are we are, are, are we seeing? 
Are there things that we did not expect? Are there things, are there things that we expected and are taking place? Uh, you know, are we, are, we, are we pleasantly surprised or are we terribly disappointed? It, uh, it, it ensures that we communicate on a, at least a monthly basis for that four month period of time while the security, uh, the police detail is in place. Otherwise, there's no guarantee that we ever can meet and this puts it on people's schedules the minute the probationary periods were, were to start so they know the, 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 second when, the second meeting of the month is always going to be a date where we need to collectively be here and it could be a five minute conversation, it could be a half an hour conversation. I, I still think uh, that successive meeting on, on this, our police chief is going to tell us if anything happens and if we need to change the security plan. Uh, I don't see this, uh, the need for this at, at every uh, second meeting that we have for the next four months. Uh, that, like I say, it, it, he can bring it up any meeting he wants. We can even have a special meeting if we want to talk about something that's not going properly. Uh, I just don't, I think we have other things in town to, to, to deal with that are, and we're talking to just as important or more important than this issue. That yeah, we need we need time. Ryan needs time, and our staff here to address other things other other than than meeting once a month to talk about this, documenting it in minutes and all, and preparing all that involving our council. I I think that's that's really going overboard for what we're trying to do here. Uh, I. Uh, I don't have a problem with the hours that you, you, you stated there, although number, number D should be one hour before, during, and one hour after, not just one hour before and one hour after. It should be one hour before, during, and one hour after the event. But for clarity, that, for clarity that, that's, yeah. that's a fair point. I mean, it's yeah. just for a special event, it means that there is not, it's um, not a four hour period, it's essentially a six hour period. Or, or whatever, it could be eight hours even, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, number three, the crowd in excess of capacity. We're talking of capacity of the building itself, right? Not capacity of the parking lot. Or are we talking of both? No, there is no capacity of a parking lot, but public safety, I mean, it's, it's well, logical. As I, as I pointed out before, when, and, and I know these guys have seen it in Boston many times, most bars and restaurants that have lines out the door are on, along the sidewalks of major metropolitan areas. This is in a, on a, on a rural road to, to north-south and residential property east-west. And, um, and added security to ensure that the lines are not creating a problem with traffic flow um, so that the, the crowds are, are manageable outside, um, so that crowds are, are behaving outside. Um, that, that's just sort of, to me, common sense. We are not in an area that is accustomed to lines for admission out the door. Um, and, and we need to make sure that's easily addressed. Well, I have no problem with that, but it, so you're talking capacity of the building itself. I mean, the parking lot could overflow and park up and down the street. We're not concerned about that? Well, we are, and that's why the security, the police detail would be managing that during when, 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 when special appearances are taking place that will increase the foot traffic in and out of the building. So that's exactly what we're addressing. Wow. Okay. Uh, and so the the uh, the licensee, just to make sure I understand that uh, on point number two here, the licensee is going to arrange for for a uniform police officer to be there. Uh, that would be a detail, I assume a detailed police officer and not 
a waitly on duty officer that's working there. That. that would be a detailed police, police officer. officer. Should we have the uh, the words detail in there? I would Uniform. I would leave that leave that to council's judgment. Uniform detail officer. Okay. Uh, it says uniform police officer, so I, we could add detail in there. I would, for clarity. I would like to see that in there. Uh, so that means the, the licensee would, would arrange for that. He would uh, pay the uh, the officer or whatever the, the going rate is. And our our police chief and and our staff here in the building would not be involved they, in they, that at all. They would be involved with with approving the officer. They would right. be improved. They would be involved with oversight of that officer while that officer was on duty, and they would be involved with an accounts receivable payable, whereby the the payment of contractual salary is by the town of Whitley, but not until they receive payment for those services from Whitley LLC. So there's no cash flow issue. On, 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 on the part of the town. So the officer right. gets paid, um, I, I don't know whether you have a 30, whether there's a 30 day accounts, accounts receivable policy in, in, of the town, I assume there is, um, but the, there's no payment. And that's typical until um, Whitley LLC were to pay an invoice of, from the town of Whitley for that <clears throat> officer's time. Okay. but. The licensee is not responsible for it, for everything. He's only responsible for securing a uniform detailed police officer. All the payments and, and reimbursements and whatever is going to come through our chief and our administrative people here for payment. As is the case with other detailed payments. Well, right. That's, but the difference is our chief will now for detail work in town he arranges for the detailed person to be there your your example here is the, the licensee is arranging for the for the police it would continue to be the same way it is now well they, that's, they that's be responsible they that's not the, the way to hire another it has to go through the police well my, if i may mr chairman yeah. this language presumes the existence of what's in the bylaw. And the bylaw, in my opinion, contemplates that there would be the same kind of administrative arrangement as there is for any other detail as the chief just mentioned. So that implicit in this is that there needs to be communication and administrative right. cooperation between the licensee and the police department. But it should make a difference to the licensee who, who the police officer is. That should come from our chief, who he decides should be there, not from them. But they'll find out when yeah. the officer shows up. That, that's fine. That's fine. But it has to come from right. right. My yeah, we, yeah. Can't, okay. we can't hire. Him. I, but you no, know, you wouldn't hire him. But you would find the person. No, no, you would no, find no. the person by contacting Where? me. Well, I, I, I. That's how. It, that's how it works. Every year, like the state you know. goes through that your local police station. Um. I'm going to, I understand that, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing my words here, so I'm, in the event, that, that means essentially, from my perspective in this moment in time, that means that if our chief can't find a detail officer, you guys can't open. And, 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 and I'm trying to avoid that situation for, from you guys. We're never going to be able to find someone. How are we going to find somebody? Okay, so well, I have a full-time officer. The chief can't do it by law. He can't be detailed. Right. So now we're down to one full-time officer. No, it would, be, it would obviously be someone from outside. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, we don't know who. Well, you we're checking credentials now, too. I'm just opening up. No, but just practically speaking, right? Put yourself in our shoes of every day we have to call Hatfield. I mean... We're now employing police officers well, from the whole county. Employing. Okay. Well, well, we are. If I'm finding them, I'm coming to an agreement with them. All that the town is doing is billing. Well, and vetting. They're and vetting. Well, okay, and vetting. I, I guess that it's a crazy it's, process. It's a question I have. Are you doing that, or is our chief? It needs to all go through the chief. Okay, That's well, how every town works. I, I, I understand that, but I'm guys. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you out here because 
the, the challenge, and, and if, and if, and it, if it will end up police, to be a disaster. Okay, but if you'd rather have our police, our, our, our chief responsible for finding that person, if he cannot find that person, that means you. So be it. And okay. if we can't find it, we can't open I, either. So I what's the that. difference? Okay. Respectfully, and forgive me, this is my first time at a hearing on the issue, but the establishment's been open for several decades. And as far as I understand, there's not a major issue of crime or traffic. And my clients have been very cooperative uh, with the police department and with the police chief. And what's included in the security plan, I, I, if I could just have one more sentence, it's just this is far in a way, I mean, like, you can't compare far and away, no disrespect to the current owner, but this is far and away more security than currently exists at the property where there is no issue, no known issue of crime. And so you're asking, so number one, we've agreed to go well, well beyond anything that exists now. And I would say well beyond anything that the bylaw requires. And you're looking for a variance because you're asking for something more than what the bylaw requires. And I just don't see justification for the variance. And it's to the point, you're describing it yourself. You're putting my clients in a position where they can't count on being able to operate their business. And so then to decide whether to proceed with this, and it does seem like the, the um, impact of this might be to make it impossible to run the business for four months. To decide whether to agree on, upon this becomes an impossible situation. I don't see how the variance is warranted Right, right, right. Let's, let's, let's stop. We only have order here. We're, we're delivering in front here because that was the agreement at the last meeting that the three select board would come up with a final motion of what we think the variant should look like. We're not at the point, you correct me, you're chair, we're not at the point of back and forth with the audience because we don't have a final agreement yet. So I hear your comments. They are valid, but, but this is not the point for discussion. We've got other people who probably want to say something too, but that is not the point of what we're doing right now. That's fair. Right? Joyce, I'd like to give Joyce an opportunity. Well, wait a minute. No, I thought you were done. I'm sorry. No. So on this issue of, of who's going to arrange for the police, are we clear that our police chief is going to find uh, detail officers to work that are in agreement with you? I, I guess they will do inform the lease who they are. Is that the way the process is going to work? Yes. yes. Okay. And and just for, for, for information, right right now, uh, for these hours that are that are being scheduled, uh, it's probably one shift, but but uh, we have uh, part-time officers working on the weekends. And my understanding is there, there's five or six officers needed to provide coverage for the weekends in town, uh, which leaves three officers left for detail. So our chief is going to have to look elsewhere to find detail officers for that, for that time period. Uh, and and I, I guess Back up a little. This board has been concerned of our police department, and, and you're fully aware of this, Jonathan. Joyce came in a little later, but we, this board, has been has been real concerned of our police department. What they're doing, what they're not doing, how they can improve, what they can do differently, how can they staff up? That's been a concern of this board for the last year or two. We re, we renewed a contract here a while ago that had certain requirements in there for the chief to do. He's doing things on that contract. Uh, we also limited, limited him to his administrative time. We said if you're doing any... Fred, can I ask a question? I'm not sure that the chief's contract is... Well, but, but this is involving his, his time. We've limited his, his time for administrative work to be in the office for one day. If we're asking him to arrange for details for all these other events, it's taken away his time from other activities, is, is, is my point of saying that. He doesn't have ample free time or to take time away from his other duties the other three or four days of the week he has. 
So, uh, okay, uh, and 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 uh, I guess let me just say that the final thing, you know, the uh, the proposed uh, sale of, of, of the establishment here is, you know, there's been figures uh, presented before of of buying a building and doing some improvements that are going to end up close to a million dollars. And if we're having a new owner spend close to a million dollars on an establishment, wouldn't it make common sense that they're going to try to follow the bylaws and guidelines and security plan that we have developed? Regardless of how much police detail we have there, they don't want to be called in here every month or at the end of four months and say, you guys failed, you can't operate anymore. They don't want to do that. They have an investment. It's not a, a cheap undertaking, a, a low cost undertaking. It is a major investment on them. They've told us that before. And I, I think it's as much of their responsibility to make sure they follow the guidelines as it is for our chief to make sure they're following them. Okay. I'll, let Joyce talk now. Joyce? Um, well, um, I'm not sure what, um, if this is really in disagreement with, with Fred or not. I actually like the idea of it having a four month time limit. Um, and the variance is, of course, related to the entertainment license. And if the entertainment license went away, then the variance would go away too and if the entertainment license continues and the variance has to be looked at. I mean, I don't think we know enough now to make a, a permanent, so, so to speak, decision. And not that we necessarily make all kinds of permanent decisions. You know, when things change, when situations change, we, you know, we look at things again. Um, so that's one of the things I, I liked that that four months was a reasonable place to start. Um, I thought that having um, like a, a built-in mechanism for us to, as a board, to get feedback was actually a, a good idea too. Um, it doesn't have to be a hearing every time. It doesn't have to necessarily involve attorneys. And just it, it, you know, check in. Um, and we do that all the time with the, our highway department chief and. Uh, any number of people come to check in on things. So I, I, I liked um, those particular aspects. I, I, I caught the typo in 2D as well. Um, so I agree it would, should be before, during, and after. Um, I think the, uh, in the past our police chief is, is worried about the administrative burden of trying to find someone for uh, six days a week for 12 or 13 hours a day. Um, what John has here is three four hour shifts, which doesn't seem like as big an administrative burden as, as the chief was worried about uh, earlier. So um, I, that did not raise a red flag for me, and I did assume that it would be through the regular kind of detail roster, the literal procedure we had already used for for details for anybody else. Um, so those were my main thoughts. Um, I completely agree about the access to the interior footage. Um, and uh, I think it's kind of also important that I think in some conversation, people have said that you know, every square inch of the inside is going to have CCTV cameras. And, and I hope they really mean that every square inch. Um, and that's something that I, I hope our police chief will be looking at. Thank you. Okay. The, the other thing I, I thought of, and I guess I can go either way on it, is is uh, either during the four month period or whatever, if we should have our our Whaley police department, not to necessarily the chief, but whoever's on duty, randomly stop in and see what's going on. To the building now, I understand you don't do that or haven't been doing it lately. Uh, your person on that's on the second shift, you know, if the if the busy time is 10, 11 o'clock, 
at the end of that shift, just walk in, see how things are going. I mean, it's, it's another measure of, of security, of checking, especially the days maybe that there isn't a detail officer there. Do some kind of random check. If you want to do it at 3 in the afternoon, fine, or at 11 at night, whenever your second shift ends. Well, Fred, would you agree that that's, that's just traditional community policing? He well, does that in other. He well, does that in other any establishment in town. Just wanders in and says hello and right, develops but, a relationship. I guess that could be a, con a condition here that because I wasn't. I was assuming that wasn't happening up until now because there's no incidents. Nothing is happening. So I, I, I guess why go in? Just just like any other business in town. I mean, there are visits. Right. Businesses. We don't stop at every business in town. Right. Four or five days out of the week, just to make sure everything's in compliance with the town bylaws. I mean, we have to build relationships with our with our community. With, that includes business owners as well. So you got to give us the opportunity to build that relationship, right. instead of mandating that we go there at three o'clock on Tuesday, Wednesday, well, Thursday. Whatever time you want it. That, that would kind of be you know up to us to do our normal, like Jonathan says, our normal community policing thing. Build that relationship. It'd be no different for any new establishment. No. Nope. Okay. Right. <coughs> are you good? Can I open this up? So what 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 do we do? We need to revise your motion, or, or is it stand? Well, where do we stand before you let people comment on your motion? Well, I think we should get other feedback, and then we can make. Unless council suggests we do it otherwise, I'm suggesting we get feedback, and if there are other changes, such as uh, the one about before, during, and after on on two D. Um, we can do all the changes at once rather than through an iterative process. Well, that and, uh, and two with detail on Right, Wh whatever they are, whatever our additions are, I just use as it is, as an example. Okay, well, I defer to what I, the chair suggested makes sense to me to take the full feedback and then go back to the document. Okay. Um, before public comment, council, you want to yeah. continue what you were saying? <clears throat> and for Oh, names, please. Sure, it's Michael Alio. Uh, I'm with Lesser Newman, Alio, and Nasser, and I represent uh, the potential buyers. And forgive me earlier for speaking out of turn. Um, to reiterate quickly, the current establishment doesn't have a history of problems that are addressed by this proposed variance. The, and, and I could be missing something here, but there's not a history of significant crimes that's any different than any other establishment in town. There's not a history of significant traffic. The buyers um, are looking to invest a significant amount of money to make the establishment better. Uh, without a history of crime, some practical reason to uh, pass a variance, which is a high threshold, I just don't see the legal basis for doing it. It doesn't make sense to me. We're not very far apart. As I started to say earlier, currently there's not uh, a problem with crime. And my clients have been working cooperatively, as far as I understand. Um, my partner, Thomas Lesser, has been the, per the point of contact. But as far as I understand, I've been working cooperatively to build a positive relationship with the police chief and the police department. And I take that very seriously. Uh, and that's the plan, is to, to work closely with the police department. So we have a proposed security plan that goes well above and beyond anything that has ever existed at this establishment. There's never been a police det detail at this establishment, as far as I understand. And so there's never been security, regular security, at this establishment the way that's being proposed right now, as far as I understand. So we're going to have this internal and external monitoring. We're going to have a security um, detail assigned uh, to the establishment, the police chief is going to be part of that process as is detailed throughout the security plan. Uh, the person will preferably have, and it will not be difficult to arrange police training, maybe even a former police officer. Um, but it's going to be a person that the police chief is going to be aware of that person and be involved in this process in a very close uh, and detailed way. So to require through this variance the hiring uh, of a detailed police officer it is just cost prohibitive. It's very, very expensive. I, I understand that you're saying it's three shifts of four hours, but that that's expensive. And 
it, it's a wary indicator to the potential buyer that in four months, even if there's no problem, what's to stop you from wanting a police detail all the time? It, it, it's, it's troubling to go through the process of enacting a variance. It's very troubling to a potential buyer. It's troubling to the current potential seller to be able to sell this property. It, it is a serious, it's as if you're saying you can't sell this business to, to the seller. And I'm not saying that the, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what my clients will do if the variance is passed. I, I'm just being frank with you. I, I honestly, can't speak to that right now, but what I am saying is I think it's legally trouble to pass a variance that requires them to hire police detail, given what the facts are. I think it makes it really difficult for the seller to sell the property with that variance. You can have, and, and uh, two of the board members have said, you can have a probationary period. I mean, it's going to be a probationary period no matter what. You have to renew the license. Um, there, to invest all this money in the establishment they're only doing that if they think they're gonna have a viable business. They're only gonna have a viable business if they follow the bylaws and stay out of trouble. I don't understand, and again, I'm not making a determined representation as to my, what my clients are gonna do if this variance passes, but would you invest a million dollars in an establishment if a variance was passed to require more than what was proposed in the security plan that was in good faith agreed, uh, you know, discussed and, and drafted it uh, in coordination with the police chief, <coughs> which already is well and beyond what is happening there now. It, it's, it's highly troubling for a buyer to buy with those circumstances. And I think given the circumstances, it creates uh, significant legal doubt. Now, if there's gonna be a probationary period, it, in, in effect, it's always a probationary period. There's never a time when it's not a probationary period. But if there's gonna be a probationary period, have the probationary period defer to what the police chief has communicated to my clients and to the town as being an appropriate security plan. Have that be the probationary period so that we can do what the police chief thinks. And I don't wanna put words into the police chief's mouth, so I apologize if that's what I'm doing. But if there, to the extent that there's gonna be a probationary period, have it be the security plan. Don't, don't, don't propose something that, as you have said yourself this evening, could very well result in the business not being able to operate. It just doesn't make sense. Go with a security plan. I don't think my clients are necessarily opposed to a probationary plan. I think anybody that's operating uh, a business of this sort knows that every day you're on probation. You have, to, you have to do well. And the current owner of the business has done well. My clients plan to also do well, but to ensure so, they're agreeing to security measures that have never been implemented at this site before. So go with the plan that my clients and that the police chief have said works for them, as opposed to passing a variance, which is a, it's a higher legal threshold to pa pass a variance, to do something that's just not warranted by the facts. That's what I would uh, I'm not, I'm not responding. I'm not counsel to speak. Mr. Chairman, just to clarify the terminology, it's the licensee who has asked for the variance. I think the issue is not the variance, but rather the conditions, because in the absence of a variance, the bylaw would require an officer at any time that entertainment is offered. So a variance is actually reducing what the obligation of a licensee would be. It's the conditions that are being proposed that I think are what the discussion is about. Right. I appreciate that point, but I respectfully say that it's not such a cut and dry fact matter. And that some, I prefer to think no court has to <laughs> render a decision on that down the road. Um, but, but I don't think it's as cut and dry as that. Well, I, I, but, but what, I guess my, and I was going to make a point, but what, but what council has indicated is, is Waitley LLC is requesting this variance to eliminate the town code requiring a full-time police, uh, uh, police detail. That variance has been requested by you, your firm on behalf of, of, of Whaley LLC. What I am suggesting in, in what I have crafted is that we modify that request for a variance, cutting it from, what time are you guys opening in the morning? 11.30, is it? Till 11.30? 12. 12, so cutting it from 13 hours a day, six days a week, to four hours a day, three days a week. So in fact, what I'm proposing makes it more viable for Whaley LLC to exist as a 
as a, as a, as a viable business. Um, I just did some quick math, and, and I don't know where the, the million dollars come from. Maybe that's an accurate it's investment number. Okay, uh, I apologize, I don't remember that. Remember reading that. The four month period of time, unless, unless I plugged in wrong numbers, is an additional approximately $10,000 in total on top of a $1 million investment already. So from a percentage perspective, it's not a great deal more money for that four month period of time. Um, I can tell you that the four months is because the, the four months allows the town of Waitley and your client to get a better understanding of the foot traffic, the car, the foot traffic in and out of the building and the car traffic in and out of the parking lot to the extent that we don't know what that is going to be right now looking at, at our future lens. The, the business plan and the, and the discussions in the past are clear because obviously they are looking for more revenue out of castaways to make the investment a viable investment. We are dealing with an absolute unknown. Citing the past is absolutely irrelevant because if the past were going to be the continuation in, per in perpetuity, they wouldn't be buying the building. They wouldn't be buying the, 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 the business. They're looking to increase traffic and that's the unknown. So what my proposal suggests is that for that four month period of time, during the historical high traffic time periods of any restaurant or bar, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, that a police detail is on duty in unison with the security plan. And I give you guys a lot of credit for the security plan that, that you created. We're just adding a little bit to, to the security plan. And the police detail is in response to your request for a variance. I just like to can I just just add to, to what Jonathan is saying. Yeah, we came up with these three days and, and the hours because, well, for one uh, detail officer is four hours minimum or eight hours. So if we were eight hours, it would be six. It would be uh, what five thirty. Uh, based on what we see happening there today, now Jonathan said we shouldn't. Uh, look at what's happening today to project the future, but but today there is very little activity uh, before 9.30 or 8 o'clock or whatever in the evenings, and especially weekdays, very little activity. So we took that into account as to why these, these three days, and the other thing, the history of incidents happening there over the last 15 years are in the evening hours, when, when during this time when the detail is would be there evening hours and on the weekend. So we, we, we looked at that also. We didn't just arbitrarily say four hours on a weekend. Yeah, there is some justification that's busy time for all most businesses, but but we also considered other other factors with that. I, I appreciate it. If I can make maybe just two. Then, then I'm gonna open it up to the rest Absolutely. of the audience. Um, my main concern is that on your own admission, it's possible that this arrangement is going to make it impossible for my clients to have their business open on certain evenings. That's just number one. I'll put that out there as number one. Number two, and the bigger concern, which ties into that first concern, is that by doing this now, it seems like you might be setting a precedent for uh, preserving it after four months. And if there were language in the ordinance that assured otherwise that if there were no incidents uh, reported and if there was not a substantial reason uh, to believe that resorting to the security plan uh, would be uh, uh, would not be in the best interest of the town then the security plan that's been proposed uh, may be implemented and the detail would no longer be required that would be more reassuring because right now as it is it's hard for me to feel confident in, telling my clients, this is just for four months, and then after that, 
you'll be able to use a security plan. If this is something that's gonna stick around forever, it's just, it's hard. It makes it more difficult for the current owner to sell and for the new owner, if there is a new owner, to invest uh, the fund. So I guess what I would ask is you consider, number one, you consider just going with the security plan. To the extent that you don't, you consider some strong language in there that assures the buyer that this really is a probationary period. And if after the uh, expiration of the probationary period, there are no incidents, then the, the requirement that a de detail officer be employed during these hours, uh, that will lapse and will not be renewed. Um, to, to your point, counsel, I, if nothing else, I guarantee you, if, speaking personally as the person who crafted this language, if I thought that this needed to be done permanently, I, I would have put it in there. In no way am I going to put anything on paper or propose anything that is hiding what I truly believe. So when I say a probationary period and after that period giving the new owners an opportunity to demonstrate that they no longer need this uniform, that's exactly what I mean. And if I didn't mean it, I would, I would st state so. And I don't want to, to, to that point, I, I am comfortable with some language that would say if there are no violations and I get that things happen, you know, but if there are no violations, um, and, and I don't know how the language would be crafted, and I would have to put that to, to, to counsel, um, because I don't want to make it cut and dry, but I also want to want, I do want to appease your, 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 your concerns. Honestly, that would be a major appeal. Right, and, and, and that would be something that perhaps counsels would, the language would work out. Um, and we wouldn't have to continue to go through this process. Um, but it couldn't be something where it cut and dry, but I, I get it. If, and, if, and if the attorneys can put together language, I'm speaking for myself, um, I would be comfortable amending this to indicate that. But again, I, I'm looking at my counsel and I worry the furrowed eyebrows make, make me think that I said something wrong. Might be for the next hearing. <laughs> and it's not, I do not want another hearing. Yeah. John, can I jump in here? Yeah. I, Joyce, go ahead. Um, I think there might be a, a misunderstanding, at least my, um, um, and it could be me as one is misunderstanding, but they talk about the security plan versus the conditions of the variance. And during, you know, assuming that the if a variance were passed, then security plan's gonna be in effect for the whole time that the variance is in effect. The, the security that, plan, yes. It's, it's, it's not like, like it's one or the other. Um, it, it's the security plan is, that was a condition of the, um, of the entertainment license and the alcohol license. So it's not that you don't have that security plan going. Um, these conditions are things that are in addition uh, and we put a four month date on it or a, a timeline because it's the kind of thing you want to review. Um, I don't want to tie the hands of uh, whoever has to make the decision on this, presumably the three of us, since there's no election in between now and then. Um, but I, I would be very wary of putting in language that would, um, that would promise something then we find ourselves in a position where we maybe have promised something that uh, you know that you know technically we you know we we'd have to fulfill and then you know it's hard to predict what the future is. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right, and and, and um, that people are going to be relying on us, you know, to be fair individuals. Yeah, and Joyce, and that's, to, that's a risk. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I and I and your your clarity is, is important that. And I, and I hope I said the, I'm going to address the former what you talked about. The security plan is different than the amended variance. The security plan is is in place, and and that and the and the internal video camera is is part of that 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 permanent security plan. And we won't know how well it works because we're going to have to go through this process of having a security detail, which is costly and could result in the business shutting down at times. Why not have that security plan? 
that my clients are going to make every effort to right. prove that that security plan, plan works, but we're not going to know after four months whether it works. Well, you will because you're, there, are, there are going to be three of the six days where, where Delta Entertainment is taking place where there won't be uh, any police detail, and for the majority of the hours, granted they will probably be less traffic hours, but for the majority of the hours on the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, there will also be no uniform police detail. So, in fact, the security plan is being given considerable um, ability to to demonstrate its its its, its success. Um, the the uniform police amendment to the variance uh, is allowing us to understand what the traffic flow in the building is going to be as the owners ramp up their their, their business so it is a difference the 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 four month period after that four month period we can have a discussion and again i, I talked about language that you guys might be able to to hammer out nothing in the security plan changes after four months but the police detail is not part of the quote-unquote security plan the police detail is in response to your request for a variance Jonathan I agree with what, what you're saying that after four months we'll decide what needs to what needs to happen at that point in time but read number five here you're isn't that covering what you're asking for I don't know how we can be more any more specific than that we either continue, we modify, or or rescind the variance. I the way mean, number five is worded, it's not worded to suggest that uh, if the evidence, uh, if there's no evidence that security details required, then uh, then there would be some presumption, or whatever it might be, some language that's ironed out, that the detail would no longer be necessary. In, in other words, just as you're going to reconsider it, which suggests that at that time you say, oh, there have been no problems at all, let's keep the detail. That's not a situation that an owner of an establishment at this spot is gonna to want to have to anticipate. In other words, it doesn't sound temporary. It sounds like a probationary period, but it sounds like at the end of it, if you say everything went rosy, then let's just keep it as it was, even though we have no evidence that it was necessary in the first place. Well, do, you, do you understand? Like, there's nothing that suggests that this is just temporary. I, just I'm not convinced that it reads one way or the other, to be honest with you. I, I, I think it reads as it reads that, that we would have an, an open and honest conversation about what transpired over the past four months. Um, I, I know personally I'd be hard-pressed to, um, to continue. If, 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 if your track record was spotless, I, I'd be hard-pressed to, to, to have a reason to continue the, the detail. I can't guarantee that, just to, to Joyce's point. There's no way I can sit here and say that without any question, I would grant the full variance. But, but I, 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 I understand that. So if, and again, this is my comfort level, if councils can figure out language which doesn't bind us to anything, but gives you comfort, <coughs> I'm open to that language and we would go forward with a, we're not gonna do this again in two weeks. We would go forward with the vote contingent upon resolution of a language dialogue between councils. Um, as long as that was, it, 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 yeah, go ahead. If I may, I can suggest the language right now. Um, in paragraph five, and to take your point, you do not want to create a presumption, in my opinion, that's not what this is about. Right. This indeed is a temporary variance, because if it's not temporary, there's no variance at all, and the requirement obtains. So you could include the language, grant a new variance with or without conditions, and the new language would be including reduction or elimination of detail hours, and that would include what I think is implicit in the document anyway, but that would be whether there's going to be any further detail hours where you would f reduce them further from what the default under the code is. Okay, well, I, 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 would, I would be open to that. I, it, I, it, it just, I, you know, I, I'm a, I would be open to that. 
I, I want to give you your, your, your comfort level, but we obviously can't just waive our ability to, 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 to revisit this. I feel like I should stop, stop taking up space for a little while. So why don't I consider that language? Okay. Other comments from the audience? Name and et cetera. <laughs> Susan Barron, 120 North Street. The responsibility of the select board, and by extension, obviously, the police force, is the protection of the safety and security of the community. That is paramount. With that in mind, if I can just take a second to address a question or an issue that council raised a moment ago, in terms of there not having been crime, there's one bylaw that the community is concerned has not been enforced over the past however many years, and that does raise concerns about safety and security. It is forbidden to employ or to permit any person in or on the licensed premises to perform any act or acts or to simulate any act or acts of human masturbation, sexual intercourse, or any touching of genitals, pubic areas, breasts, or buttocks of any other person. In other words, most activities that would happen in a lap dance are actually prohibited in our town. That is not something that either customers or employees are going to be calling the police about because both have signed on for that, but that is in violation of the bylaw. So the assumption that there is no <coughs> criminal going on within the premises because the police are not called very frequently doesn't hold water. We believe the community, and I'm speaking you know, for people who couldn't be here tonight as well, believes that there is strong reason to believe that there is activity going on that is violating yes, the bylaws. I mean. That Susan, I mean, you were there the you other went day. There. You went there the other day. Well, like, what are we doing? Seriously. Well, yes. I mean, please, I'm not, I wouldn't let her interrupt you guys. We get interrupted all the time. Well, I, I, and I put it to rest. I'll, I'll address their, their point. Um, at Mr. Spagnuolo's suggestion, I went there at 3 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon just to see what the place looked like, the lay of the land. I was not there looking for trouble. I did, there were like four customers in the place at the time. You know, I really wanted to see what the physical layout was and not interfere with business. Given that there were four customers in there, there was one woman, first of all, the layout is such that there are two rooms and it's very dark, so it's very difficult to see what is going on. I also wasn't going to follow people around. At 3 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon, one of the dancers took a man into the back for his private dance, or went with a man, into the back of the, the more private space for a private dance. I do not know what transpired. I didn't feel it was my place to follow them and say, excuse me, can I see what you're doing here? But I don't know what is going on there, which brings me to one of my points about the security agreement. The security agreement, I think it was Joyce's point, the security agreement is enforced when the police are there and when the police are not there. So the security agreement on its own has to protect the employees, the customers, and the community because there are times it will be all that there is. First of all, the security agreement calls for at least one security officer on premise at all time when there is live entertainment at the inside entrance of the building. The security officer is a bouncer. Standing in the doorway, he will see nothing because when you stand in the doorway, all you see is the bar. You don't see the dance floor. You certainly don't see the champagne room and the private cubicles where private dances go on. So a security officer standing at the door is checking IDs and yes, making sure no one comes in who was totally drunk, but is doing nothing to enforce our bylaws. So the first thing I would ask is within the security agreement that that wording be changed, that that person should be walking around the premises, should not be the one checking IDs, but should be making sure that there is nothing illegal going on. Second of all, in terms of the video, the vi if the video was only available upon request, there is no way, it's after the fact. So there's no way to see <coughs> when illegal activity is going on to do something about it. Particularly if you don't have a, you know, the security officer walking around and stopping illegal activity or calling the police when they have it. 
So, in fact, when you walk into the building under the proposed security agreement, once you are through the door, there is nothing protecting you, there is nothing protecting the employees, because there is no security in place when the police officer isn't there. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the hours, the proposed hours of the variance. So I think as the security agreement stands now, I would strongly encourage the board not to pass any variance. We need a, if there is to be a variance, and I'm not saying I necessarily support one, but if there's to be a variance, the security agreement has to be much stronger to offer the protection of the customers and the employees. Um, the, in terms of the hours of the variance, yeah, as I said, I was there at 3 o'clock on a Thursday and somebody had a private dance. Wasn't the laws being broken then? I don't know, but it's certainly not within the 9.30 to 1.30 on a weekend. Um, my husband and I also sort of ran an experiment last Saturday night. I drove by at 8 o'clock on Saturday and counted 15 cars. He drove by at 10 o'clock and counted 17 cars. So having an arbitrary 9.30 start time for police coverage is just that. It's arbitrary because there's no significant difference in traffic, you know, in the volume of customers in the place at 8 o'clock versus at 10 o'clock. The person is on a four-hour detail, whether you say four hours, three or two, he's getting paid four hours. So you might as well make use of him for the other hours if it's not needed, if it's supposedly not needed at 8 or 9 o'clock. Uh, your comments on the security plan, that's a summary of the security plan. There's more detail in there what that security person is going to do. You're assuming he's just standing at the door. That's what the summary says. That's what the he's summary says, but the there is more detail in that plan of what that person is going to do, what he's required to do, that it's not in the summary plan. I, I believe so, also, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the internal surveillance cameras are also in the rooms that are being discussed, right? You don't know? I mean, is it fair to the plan? Joyce said every square inch, so she wants them in the bathrooms. <laughs> I can't do that. So, I'm sorry? Can't so, have them in the bathroom. Half an hour ago, Joyce said it's every square work. inch of the property, so I don't really know what the town wants. Well, I, the, yeah. the, the, so the every square inch came from an earlier hearing where I believe it was um, Attorney Lesser who said, there's going to be cameras on every square inch of the interior. But he may have been uh, engaging in hyperbole, um, and, uh, but I think it's the public areas. Well, but it's also the public areas including the private dance rooms. Right. Right. And so it's my assumption, because these are permanent record video surveillance tapes, that knowing that the police chief can look at a surveillance tape, pick a time of day, pick a day. That's, a, in my mind, a pretty strong deterrent against anything from your description, justified, your, your accurate description about, about legality, would not be taking place because if the chief decided to take a look at one of those surveillance videos, camp, the tapes, and found that on the tape, then that's a clear violation. So the point of the, of the camera is both in case we need evidence, but it also should, and, and I think will be a strong deterrent against that type of activity. Will, and this may be a question to the attorneys, is it necessary to post signage that activities are being video recorded for, oh, for security. We tenants. absolutely would yeah, yeah, yeah. post that there are video cameras on the premises, yes. It'll probably be a deterrent to business, to be perfectly honest. But As is a cop sitting there all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so, four people in this bar I mean, now. It sounds like we want a live feed. You guys just, want to do a live feed? We'll leave, it, we'll leave it as is. Let it be run for a live down. Feed. I mean, just That's let it be the public run runs. down and collapse into just itself do a live feed. at this point. I mean. That's for sale. We don't want to ask like women, right? Because that wouldn't, we, who cares what they think? Let's have a live feed. I'm not sure I'm following. That's where we're at. He's just being a wise guy. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I'm following you. The public's unhappy that it would be in the past, the video. And that wouldn't be able to stop anything that's happening right that moment. 
right? Mm -hmm. right. That's one of the best part of my yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the only option of that is to have a live feed. But I would remind you that the public doesn't get a vote. Okay. Three bucks. I'm just countering things that are said. I, I understand that, but at some point, so a lot of this we talked about is about people saying it's about safety. How else does a business get over all these expenses to cover? To be very busy. Right. And I don't Catch see any business that's going to be deterrent to your, to your traffic flow. Unless they are going well, there. It's a deterrent to the bottom line. What's that? It's a deterrent to the bottom line. So we need more people to come in to raise revenue. Right? As I mentioned, the four hour a day, three day a week for four months is less than $10,000. For now. We don't know what's going to happen in four months. Is that, there's, no, there's no baseline for this is going to continue. And we just agreed that we would have a conversation about language that would put without... Well, not everybody. I'm speaking for myself. Okay. And at some point it's going to come to a vote. Okay. Okay. Other comments? Yes, sir. Chip Powers, Weber Road. Um, a question about the, the, uh, the probation uh, period, Jonathan. Um, does that mean at the end of that probation period, if everything is okay, there would be no requirement for any police officer from not, the town to be there? From my perspective, not necessarily, but it's a possibility that would be open to a discussion about whether we think that the new owners, whether we have a sense of what kind of customer traffic flow the, the, the new operations are gonna, gonna realize. After four months, you get a pretty good sense. Uh, if anything, traffic flow will go down after four months because of the newness is, is gone. But you can decide at that time. We will decide at that time what, what happens, yes. It doesn't mean it's not all or none. It could, you could reduce the number it, it of could be It could be anything, depending upon what we find during that four month period of time. Other comments? Joe. Uh, Joe Zwinski, uh, 59 Christian Lane. Obviously you guys have, the select board has read the security plan um, and you either agree with it or you don't. I haven't heard anything, a lot anyway, to say that we need a lot of changes in it. So I'm assuming that you agree with the security plan. Um, I guess I have a question for the prospective owners. Um, is there a minimum age that you're looking at as far as your employees or your patrons in this business? What is the minimum the age that you're going to allow people or work? 21, or years, 21 years of age for a customer and 18 for an employee. So you're going to have 18 year old dancers there? No. But you just no, asked the minimum age. You just asked the minimum age. Like, That's don't the state put words law. That's state law. Minimum, yeah. wage, minimum when, age. You work in the bar, you have to be. It's not about the adult portion. The laws go against the liquor portion right so how, are you going to separate, how are you going to separate the two i'm not separating anything what the alcohol about? and the underage by creating a culture of responsibility and nobody no, knowing the customer that, cannot come like, in under 21 sure. period right the bartenders need to be 21 too don't they to serve alcohol you need to be 21. Uh, well i know that so we don't I, know, I know that, touch alcohol i know that if you go to the grocery store whatever, whatever the state law whatever the state law is state law is 21 years old yeah. to serve alcohol. well you're you're doing business in the state so you should be able to tell us I'm telling you. They're all, okay. Well, you're saying whatever the whatever the state law is. Guys, so just I just told you, Joe. Listen, guys. Listen. Don't just talk. Listen to what I said. So now I repeat it because I didn't hear it. I was too busy talking. So just repeat okay. it for me, okay? Twenty-one years of age for a customer to walk into the bar, which is the entire establishment. Someone under twenty-one cannot walk in the front door. Period. Okay. Mm -hmm. And above eighteen to work there. And it's above twenty-one to serve alcohol. I don't know if that's true. Eighteen. I'm oh, sorry. It's 18. Correct. Is it 18 to start off on? It is. Okay. okay. have to be specially right. trained, which will be specially trained. Okay. Yeah. So now we're putting a guy who has absolutely no idea how much, how old the bartender is. I just said the answer. You said Mr. you didn't know how old no, the bartender is. I did not. Ask. Mr. Edwards asked me a question. Did you say you didn't know Wait. how old the bartender needed no, to be? No, I didn't. Just let you talk. Okay. You did. Stop. You just didn't Please. know what guys, how old. Guys, stop. Hey, forget about stop. Jonathan. Stop. You're going to do what you want. It's your, it's your opinion. You should just take the vote, right? Just take the vote and be done with it, right? Just take the vote and be done with it. Joe. Right? I mean, this is, we're, we're beating it to death. We're making Joe, these stop. guys come down here every, Joe, every Joe. week. 
You know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Stop. I'm leaving. You don't have to leave. Oh, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm building on. Okay, because I, I, whatever I have to say is enough. I'm just leaving. It's a new choice. I know it's my choice. No, I'm just like you're just wanting to stop because he's, he's calling it to order. Right. That's all. Well, it's the first time he's done anything in the last month. Okay, and as we know it today, the security plan that has been developed has been in concert with our police chief, and there is agreement between the police chief and the new owners on the security plan, correct? Well, um, is, is there that, is the, like, the when, when, wording of the interior camera portion. Right, with, with, with okay. the addition of the interior camera portion, is that correct? Are, are you asking, I, I think the police chief is right behind me, are you asking me? Yes. <laughs> That's correct. And, and as far as the police chief is concerned, is that correct? They've, they've agreed to what what we gave in the second yes, revision. Okay. But as far as I know, there hasn't been a final decision to say, yes, this is approved or no, it's not approved. It, it was continued discussion with legal counsel in different language. So nobody's ever said, yes, this is the final, final draft. The final I think draft. that whatever we vote on tonight is the final draft, with, with or without amendments to it. That's the final draft. And, and, and wait, let me just finish. And if we vote to approve the security plan with or without amendments, um, it's up to the parties to adhere to that security plan, both both on our side and on and on the LLC side. And, and so go ahead. Let me ask counsel to clarify this. I thought the security plan was approved by the police chief and we could comment on it and and accept it, I guess, but as far as approval of it, it rests with the police chief. Yes, the approval of the plan right. by the conditions of the vote to grant the license is with the chief. The so chief. the practical effect of the motion tonight is to address an element that is in the plan by reference to the interior video footage. It would be easier if in addition to that being a condition of a variance if the board so grants that language also be put into the plan itself but that technically would not have to happen so i would certainly recommend it though if, if that's how the board votes so we can vote on that to the end the security plan and part well, of well what variance. you mean i what i'm my opinion is what you're voting on is that the element of interior video CCTV yeah. as a condition of your variance would be available in three ways to the police chief upon request to other law enforcement through judicial procedure and three by discretion of the licensee and that that's essentially what was added to the motion at the time that the chairman made it mm -hmm. Okay. And, and should the, yeah. go ahead, Joyce. Can I ask that, yeah. um, how, I think that should be a part of the security plan that does not necessarily end when, you know, after four months, I want it to be a part of the, the, the actual security plan. And I don't really want to vote on a variance without uh, some assurances from uh, our police chief or anyone involved that that will be a part of the security plan. There, the, from my mind, there's nothing in the security plan that ends at the four-month period of time because the That's right. the variance is want, separate I, from the security plan. So the security right. plan is forever. Correct. But I want that wording to be in there. I want that amendment to the security plan. Be, I'm not comfortable with voting for the variance without that. Uh, promise of that wording being in the security plan. Well, then I think we should vote on the security plan first with that amendment, and then and then should that pass, we we or you would feel comfortable going forward with the variance vote. But you're saying, and I'm probably in agreement, that without the the security plan approval with amendment first, there wouldn't be a vote on the variance. It would be it'd be difficult. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, Fred Barron, 120 North Street. Just a general question: Is there anything in the detailed security plan that 
says how long the proprietor has to keep the security video. It, it, that's in there someplace? Okay, because it's not in the... You it's stored and retained for a certain period of time, yes. It's not, okay. it's not just live and... Well, no, 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 I know, but I just, just because it's not in the, gen, in the no. summary plan, I just want to make sure that, there, that that was covered in the detail plan. Yes. Yeah. And that is something that we can check on. The chief can say, all right, let's make sure that, you know, you pick a date. Right, that, that, that's, yeah. that's just yeah. a, because it wasn't right. summary yeah. plan. Yeah. I didn't know no, that. I, that I just covered. looked it up, Fred. I, yeah, yes. there is a requirement to hold on to the footage for some time. Right. Okay. okay. Okay, so do we need a motion? Yeah, to I'm gonna, I just wanted to put out one more final comments or questions before we put the security. Well, we're going to vote on the amendment to the security plan first. Any other comments or questions? Um, do I hear? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm realizing the security plan, the police are part of that agreement, right? They were part of the discussion and negotiation. Is it appropriate to put in the security plan with reference to the video something that the police will view at least you know, X amount of time every week, every month? Some, something to make yeah. sure that the police are randomly viewing video or somehow that it's not just piling up and not doing anything? I, I think, I've thought about this a, 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 a lot. I. We don't put, we have the ability to ask the police chief about his viewing of and request for video, the, the video surveillance footage at any time. I think it's fair to say if we asked and he said, no, I haven't looked at it in the last three weeks, four weeks, whatever, whatever it is, I, I think that this, I'll speak for myself, I would have a problem with that. Um, you know, because the, the chief has to, we, we have to trust the chief as the chief law enforcement officer to do what he feels is best to do his job that we've asked him to do. Um, just like I don't tell the highway superintendent how to plow the streets. Mm -hmm. That being said, I can go to the highway superintendent and say, hmm. The streets haven't been plowed in a month, and it's January, and it's snowed three times. That kind of thing. So, so the, the chief should probably expect us to ask that question. And but the chief, we have to trust that the chief's going to do his job. Fine. Okay. Yeah, but th that gives me assurance that there is some sort of you know check system. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, because I also don't want four months to go by and look at the chief and say. So, how's the surveillance look? And the chief says, I don't know, because then we have absolutely nothing to make a judgment on. Yeah. So, and he gets that. He's a smart guy, right? Yeah. Right, <laughs> that's why he's here. Um, okay, do I hear a motion to accept the amendment to the security plan that I composed um, t for internal surveillance access. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm trying to pull it up here. Okay, um, interior, in, interior footage will be made available to the Waitley Police Chief upon his reasonable request to other law enforcement through proper judicial procedures and by other law enforcement, it's sort of like if the state police wanted to, well, they would have to go through judicial procedures. And by the way, again, no one would have access to that video other than the chief for privacy concerns um, or at the discretion of Castaway's management. Okay, so, I would second that motion. Well, I didn't make the motion because I don't feel comfortable making the motion because I, I crafted it. Oh, then I would move that the security plan uh, be amended. Uh, the specific sentence on interior CCTV footage would be made available, inserting the phrase to the Whitney Police Chief upon his reasonable request, comma, and then going back to the original language, to in law enforcement through proper judicial procedures or at the discretion of Castaway's management. Okay, I second, second the motion. 
Voice vote. All those in favor? Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Aye. So the next motion that I would like to hear, or not, depending upon how you guys feel, is someone needs to make a motion to accept the security plan with the amendment. <clears throat> Sorry, do we need to close the public hearing before we do this? I don't know. Yes. Your hearing, <laughs> is, on, your hearing is on the variance. You're, you're conducting ancillary business right now. So, yeah. in my view, you can continue this before you take your vote. On the and then go back. Okay. Right. And, and remember, you want to be sure you've had all your information come in before you close the hearing. Okay. Well, I did not hear any other. I, I believe we're at that yeah. point. I'm just um, Amy, do you want to say anything? I'm all set. Okay. <laughs> um, I would make a motion to close the public hearing so that we can take up ancillary voting uh, to reopen the public hearing immediately after votes have been taken. Joyce? Yeah, I'm confused. No, the um, hearing is no. closed and it's closed. Oh, so we don't have to go back yeah. in the hearing to make the vote? No. Okay, I'm sorry. No. I thought we had to go. After closing the hearing. I just want to make sure, Jonathan, that your next motion or the one after that is going to cover where the cameras are going to cover in the building. I think that's detailed in the security plan already. So security okay, because there has been disagreement in this room about it. There's been every square inch, there's been the public areas and the public private areas, but not the private private areas, which are the bathrooms, so it seemed like there was not agreement. I, of course, I haven't read the full right. security plan, so I can't comment. You wouldn't. But I would like the public areas and the public private areas to be covered by the video. Not the bathrooms, obviously. Not the bathrooms. Right. Not the private private bathrooms, which are, in fact, yeah. sort of public. Can you anyway. confirm that, Brian? When the board voted to grant the entertainment license, and I could also check the alcohol license, there was a, there were conditions that were imposed relating to improvements to the building that included the, the, the wall that was being constructed. It also included to install a new video surveillance system for the licensed premises, providing the capacity to view and record at least the following areas. Um, number four is all inside areas as allowed by law, which are accessible to the public. As allowed by law was a recommendation of Attorney Lesser, so that we're complying with um, the law in terms of this stays out of the restrooms and those types of things. Uh, but that was that's one of the conditions that was voted on for the license. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Fred, did you want to say anything? Motion no, no. to close. I have a question on. Uh, you're on a motion here, just to clarify. Clarify one thing here. I understand that the four months, and we're gonna look at it every month, but we, we also got it on, what, December or January, the, the license renewal coming up. Does that mean we're deferring that until the end of the four months period? Or are we approving that license on that date, and then later on deciding on the variance? Is there the, the license, Renewal is statutory, so you need right. to act by the end of the year. We need to act on that, and the, the, and the four months period. The four come. months, depending on when it commences, could either end prior to or after that end of year point. Okay, and at, at that point, at the the point in time when the four month period comes up, we still have the option if we want to rescind the license. No, no. The four months is as to the variance, to the variance. whether it will be continued, modified, or some other action taken. Whether we rescind or not rescind the license has nothing to do with the four month period of time. It is, that can happen as council has correctly pointed out, any time. At any time, so okay. This is about the variance request and the amendment that we're going to propose right. to that variance request. But the reason to rescind it could be because of the variance, I mean. Well, that could be a possible action, but we'll, we'll wait. To I'm know. not sure I, no, I don't think those okay. are really mixed. Okay, there so. there any conditions of the variance, the compliance with those, and the performance under the variance is the review exercise at the end of the four months. The license renewal, although by subject matter, may implicate something that's in the variance, it's really a, a separate 
exercise. Several exercise, okay. I just want to make sure we understand what we're doing in January and, and the yeah. four month period. Yeah. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. No, I was pointing it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make a motion to close the hearing. Uh, is there a second? Oh, sure, second. Joyce? Yes, I second it. No, I know. We've got to vote now. Okay, in, uh, in favor. Fred? Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay. Now, should we revisit the amendment or can we live with that vote or should we redo the amendment vote? I have three items uh, on the variance, but you're looking to take action first on the security plan? On the security plan, that's correct. Okay. So, if that was the only change, a proper motion would be to approve the security plan with the amendment adopted at this meeting. Okay. Anybody want to make that motion? Okay, I'll make that motion to approve the security plan as proposed with with the amendment that was discussed at this meeting. And agreed to at this meeting. And agreed to at this meeting. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Joyce? Aye. Yeah. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Unanimous? Um, now we will vote on the amendment to the, well, you had three points that you want to make. The, the three are the three changes to the written motion document dated August 1, 2018, which came up during discussion. The first of those was in item two. Uh, inserting the word detail after uniformed in the second line. Uh, in item 2D, uh, it would read one hour before, comma, during, comma, and one hour after a special event. And then in uh, item 5, uh, should the board so uh, approve, that was the language that I suggested to address what would happen at the end of the probationary period so that uh, after the word conditions at the beginning of line five, the phrase including reduction or elimination of detail hours would be added. And do we need to, does it say in, do, how do we deal with when the clock starts to tick in terms of? Well, the, Clock is referenced in item one, commences operations. Beginning on the date of licensee commences operations after completion of the purchase. So I guess my concern is, is that, and I'm just gonna make up dates here. If the sale were completed tomorrow, what I'm trying to avoid is that operations begin the next day and then after four months, and I'm not saying you guys would or wouldn't do this, I'm just saying after four months, then they close for an undetermined period of time to, well, I guess they, they have to make their, they have a month to make the, the corrections. Can I ask you guys, is, is your plan to close for an indeterminate amount of time while you make these, these modifications? No. No? Can't afford to. So, we took which modifications specifically outside of the cameras? Talking about like the fence? That the, the the fence, the internal the internal That's security outside. cameras, yeah. any 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 work you guys are going to do on on the inside to make it sprucier or whatever. That would usually be done during the day and then open at night, so maybe we'll close during the day for a couple hours, but but we're not going to shut down. Right. So I I guess I, I guess my question is how do we when does the clock start start to tick? in terms of their ramp up of activities to increase business flow. I guess I would say the clock starts to tick after all the security, and I think we said it's a, we have, they have 30 days to complete modifications? Um, it would be the 30 or 60. 60? 60. 60. Okay, so. I would argue that the clock starts to tick 
at the day the day that their improvements have been undertaken. <coughs> You might want to do it internal improvements. They, I don't think they'll be ready outside. So, so you're giving them. Okay. You said 90 days plus four months <sighs> for internal. No, they have they have 60 days for for internal. Don't they have 60 days for the fences too? No, they're going through the conservation and ZBA in 60 days. Ryan is looking at the uh, the license. It says 60 days. We have com we have conversations if if. If they're not able to do what's what's provided here, they'll come back to the board because it's impossible. So there's going to be further dialogue if that's the case. Okay, so I'm going to say that the clock starts to tick. Um, that's when answer. you guys come back and say we're done, or when you guys, or if if you guys come back and say we can't get it all done within 60 days, then we would revisit when that clock starts to tick. But I, I just want to make sure that the clock doesn't start to tick when we know that there's going to be no no change to anything because we, we've all agreed that there's not going to be a big difference in, in, in terms of business operations on day one. Well, I, I, I don't know where, I don't, I don't understand what you're trying to do. We're understanding the time period. You know, they're going to commence, the, I think they said they're going to commence operation. If you sell today, tomorrow you're going to be open. You're going to be serving liquor and if you have entertainment, fine. That, you're, you're commencing operations that day. Right, but but you're they, not going to close. You, I, I think you. I heard you say you're not going to close for say two weeks or whatever to make improvements because you can't afford that. You're going to start as soon as possible. Uh, I don't know. The 60 days is, an, is another another day to, to wrinkle the time. I guess to, to talk about well, what's going to be done in 60 days. If it's not done 60 days, you need more time. And then, well, does that mean you can't commence operation until that time period? No, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that, Fred. It's well, just fun to have us come here before the board. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be <laughs> no. Uh, commence operation or, or implement the, the, rather than commence operation, maybe implement the conditions in the license. Four months after you implement the conditions in a license, is is more meaningful than commence operation. I, I don't know what that means. Jonathan, is your concern that, that they close for a month and then they only, we only have three months, or is it the level of activity? The, I, I, my concern is that we all know that nothing changes on the first day of, of the life of the of the ownership officially transferring. We know that. Right. I guess I'm assuming that the uptick in foot traffic in and out of the building happens relatively simultaneously with the improvements to the footprint of the of the land, building land. So what I'm suggesting is that that clock starts to tick. They don't, they have they have 60 days to do this. They've got to do it within 60 days. So the clock starts to tick at that point in time to give us a true understanding of what the traffic flow is going to be like around that on the premises. You're, you're assuming they're not going to you're not going to get increased traffic until after the 60 days. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that it takes time to implement a business plan. Well, and what, I, I, I don't know if I could say that, if I could agree to that. I, they may the next week do some marketing efforts that's going to increase traffic, regardless okay. of what you do with the, with the facility, say, right? Uh, I, I'm not sure if this is supposed to talk any longer. I don't know. It seems a little wacky to me. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 it risks, you know, if, if a lot of improvements and advertising and outreach are done one month, you know, you open day one, Three months go by, there's not much happening. Then there's a month where you're doing a lot of advertising and improvements. Then your four months are up. You come back to the board and they say, we've actually really only had a month of testing. So I think Jonathan's trying to avoid that situation. He's trying to make sure that the board feels like they've had a good, accurate test and they're able to make a decision based on good information. Okay, so it seems to me it's protecting both parties. That's not the way, the way it's written here. Commence operation. I have a problem with the way that is, is written because we've talked 60 days, uh, improvements, and, and whatever. Uh, 
I don't know what that day is. You guys don't probably don't know either. Whatever you guys want. Whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> no, whatever you want. You tell us. We'll accept it. Well, and I'm and I'm I'm trying to make it I'm I'm trying to make it fair. I I, I don't want to come back here and say to Margaret's We're point. Back. We, what's that? We're gonna be, be back here so much. <laughs> <laughs> Not for anything we did. We really are. We have conservation. We have ZBA. We have to come back once a year minimum for each license already. We have a four-month probationary period. Right. We're going to be coming great but, friends. But, I, but I, I, I hope you get my point. Yeah, I, I get it. I'm just saying it doesn't matter because whether it's four months or six, whatever you guys want. There's a set occupancy limit. And so they're right. going to start proceeding with operations. They're going to do some sort of internal renovation. So until the renovations are done, there'll be no detail. And then when the renovations are done, there'll be a police detail in four months. Is that, that what That's what I'm suggesting. When renovations are done, and I'm assuming that renovations are going to take place simultaneously with the security cameras going up, and, and it, it just... Well, the cameras are going to probably, yeah, I don't know. I guess they get done first, or within the 60 days, right? That's what we talked about. Yeah. Okay. Which isn't necessarily going to be with, you know, if there's a slow period of time in the season, which we don't know yet when that is here, right? Because you do have different factors in this sure. area. Ideally, you renovate a restaurant in the slow season or a, a bar or whatever it is. I mean, that's historically how people do it. So when we can decide when that time is, that's maybe when a bigger overhaul inside happens. Outside and cameras, those are a done deal. Those are items we've agreed to, and those have to be done expeditiously with taking into account ZBAs and conservations, because we're in wetlands there, right? Joyce, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, uh, mostly I'm a little confused. Um, the the thing we're talking about is the, the variance. Right. And if at the end of the four months of the variance, whenever it starts, if we feel like, well, you've been closed for three months of that, or, or we really haven't got a good idea, then you know, we have various options at that point. Um, and it, it, it's really hard to predict. So I think um, it's probably a good idea to pick something. Um, and we still have you know, we're not, we're, our hands are not tied by the language of the variance one way or the other. How, how about you know, if, if things all you know, go really smoothly and swimmingly, then, you know, we, we, we kind of know where we're heading and, um, you know, but, but we can't predict the future. So I don't know how much time at this meeting we should spend trying to, um, but pick a point in time and then okay. um, so, you know, do the best we can, of course, but we're, we're never going to find a perfect right. Name, so. So what I'm going to suggest then is that the, the, the clock starts to tick 30 days from today. To Joyce's point, we got to pick a date. And from, I'm sorry, 30 days from when the, when the closing or whatever happens. And then and it, clicks, it ticks for that four month period of time. If the business closes during that time for upgrades, renovations, whatever, the clock stops ticking until you reopen. I, I, don't, I don't want the four months to be taken up at any point by business not happening. Fair enough. Okay? So, uh, just for clarification purposes, 30 days from when did you say? Well, when when the from, the, the transfer. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman. Yes. Wait, wait. Yeah. There was a suggestion at the start of this hearing that the transfer might not even take place. So I think you need to ask on the record: Is the sale still proposed to be consummated? Because that's a date that the board does not have control over. Right. The parties don't have absolute control, but they can express an intent. Okay because otherwise we could be in a limbo position. All right. Assuming that we pass this, is the plan, you guys, to still proceed with this sale? That's a question that can't be fully answered at the moment, I assume, but I think the answer is yes. Well, okay. But, but it can't be fully answered. We're going to have to go and think about it. Right. I, I think what, what I know it was a choice, so you were saying, Jonathan, the 30 days after the uh, completion of the sale, or closing day, whatever you want to call it, that 30 days after that date, the four month probation period starts. And that gives our chief time to know 30 days 
After closing, he's got to arrange for the security for these. What items. happens during that thirty-day period? Right. Is there a detail or no detail? That's great. Right. And, and there wasn't, uh, but I'm but I'm rethinking this, and I apologize, for you guys, because this is getting very granular, and I I really do apologize for this. But if I were buying an establishment, I would probably be <coughs> setting up a launch date, and I'd be making a big splash out of it. New owner under new ownership. We're ready to go. We're this is going to be a big splash. Welcome to the community, that kind of thing. So I, now I'm sort of wondering whether it should. Let's assume the close happens. Closing date. Whenever that it should happen right at, at, at closing, closing. And if they do change. I I I I think four months from after pushing the purchase, excluding any time when they're closed. Excluding any so time that, in the so that way I, we have a again because if it were me, I'd be like I'm I'm having a party the first day. And the police detail would start immediately. Right. I'm a little bit nervous yeah. that we're gonna have a thirty. Right. Yeah. The, pol the police day, the de police detail would start immediately. A a upon upon closing. That's fine. Okay. Excluding. Excluding. So the mo so. Council should we do operations post closing. Yeah. Yes. Should we take this one at a time? I, I think we're at. At the language as it reads, then. Commencement <laughs> of operations <laughs> after the completion of the purchase. The only addition now, though, is excluded from the four months calculation are days in which the establishment does not open for business. Yes, correct. Well, well, full days. Well, full, full days, yes. If you guys are closed for a full day. Yeah, I mean, generally, construction starts at 7 a.m. and ends at 3, so. Right, yeah, no, I'm talking full days. Yeah. Right, because you're not going to have people doing, doing work at 8 o'clock in that anyway. Okay, so you're just adding, excluding closed okay. so council, operations. To yeah. no council, do we take these okay. individually? You may, but it's, it's Doesn't need really to. a vote that is to do, to grant the variance subject to the following conditions, so you may take it as one vote. Okay. Unless there's... I, a I'm going to make a motion that we grant the variance subject to the following conditions that council is going to read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got seven minutes. Not me. <laughs> yes, not our council, Whaley Council. So the motion as made on the document dated a August 1, 2018, uh, with the following revisions. In item two, in line two, inserting the word detail between uniformed and police. In item 2D, inserting a comma after before and the word during. In item five, after the word conditions, in line three, inserting uh, the phrase including reduction or elimination of detail hours. And the fourth revision is that in item two, after the phrase four month probationary period in the first line, we would insert excluding days the establishment is not open for business. Uh. It's it, two it, one, one. You, you that's intended to be full days, if you want to say full day. Well, I'm not sure it matters. I just thought maybe it belonged to number one. Yeah, that was number two. one. Uh, excuse me, yes, you're right, you're right. Number one, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. It might have the same effect. Do I hear a motion? Can I say one thing? Did you also put in there about the detail officer being hired by the police chief, not the security director? Um, that was there would be, it would be per normal detail procedures of okay, the I didn't say that in there. That's, I just want to make sure that Does it need it's not to? up to us to hire because yeah, no. we're not going to be able to. Does it need to? I'm not sure it needs to because it would be outside. I think we would have to, we would have to make a motion to change that because that's the normal operating procedure. So oh, whatever. Yeah. But it's, do I get to what he's saying? It's what I was arguing about before. The way it's stated here is licensee is going to arrange, and he's saying he's not going to. He's going to pay Okay, that's fair. It, yeah, that's fair. Uh, Rather than maybe just strike out during which the, the, the licensee shall arrange for it, just say, yeah. shall not apply the following times during which 
and licensee's expense, a uniformed detailed police officer was approved by way of the police chief to be present at these times. Yep, that's fair. So just strike out licensee shall arrange for in number two. Second second line, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, if that's how the yeah, wish is that. Strike okay. that part of it out, okay. Can I make one comment? Uh, if it's outside the scope, then I guess we don't deal with it. What happens if despite everyone's effort, he can't find detail? Which happens? I, I, I guess... Well, why not defer to, to the security plan? I guess come back to us. Why not defer to the security plan if the police chief can't find a detail? In the case that the police chief is unable to yeah. secure a detail, defer to just... Which is applies anyways. It, but it applies anyway. Good luck. Go ahead, Joyce. I was just going to say, because it, it's not going back to the security plan if the security plan is in place. Agreed. The security plan is in place. Right. So then why shut the business down if, through no fault of the police chief's own, but the police chief and through no fault of the business owners? I, I think I think that probably is fine. I, I, would, I would think that if chief is having a hard time finding detail, mm -hmm. they were going to have a conversation really fast about right. what we need to do to change what's our system. A really fast the results in the business not operating for I, 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 I get that. So why not have a contingency that in the case that um, the police chief cannot secure a detail, then uh, the police chief shall report uh, to the board um, and the, uh, the establishment shall continue to operate. But we need to have a conversation. Yeah, I you are. I mean, it, you contemplated a lot of conversations anyway. So why not? <laughs> and the police chief can send an officer on those days to do a spot check. Just you know, hey, swing by right. unannounced. Make sure that when there's no detail there, you know, people aren't swinging from the chandeliers or doing whatever they might be doing when there's no detail there. Okay. That that would I, I, probably allay a lot of concern I, I, about. Just the reality, just logistical reality, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't like it, but I don't think there's any way around it. It might never occur. It might be possible. To, right. To I think it is. I think it will be possible. It's, it's 12 hours a week. It's yeah. not. It, it very well might work out, but in the case that it doesn't, at least these guys aren't considering investing a lot of money yep. first in the business that might not operate on the busiest times of we, yeah, because it's, it's through no fault of you guys. So what, so what number on your on the motion are you suggesting we add some language? Where would you want us to? I, I don't think we, I, I think we've got to, let's just handle, I think we would know uh, well enough in advance to have a quick meeting about it. I, I don't think I want to put something into the agreement about that. I mean, the, we, the, we want the police officer there for for the safety of the public and the employees and everyone involved. Just because we can't find one on a day, does that mean, well, we're not interested in the people's safety anymore? I'm, they're not there right now. I'm, no, but we, we've been through that. I understand. We've been through that. I guess, Joyce, the question is, um, there, there needs to be some understanding of what happens, and it may not be germane, I mean, it's germane, but it may not be appropriate for this. It's just a conversation we have to have, what happens if. Okay, so let's have that conversation, but I don't think it, it, you know, I don't think it has to be changing any wording in the variant. I, I, I think I agree with that. So okay. Potentially closed for three days at a time. Um, we're not saying that. We're not. We, we need to have a conversation about how to. But, how so to the, the only thing, practically speaking, is the way detail works. It's the same day coverage, typically. Okay, where we have a standing appointment, which this is. Right. Maybe it will be more planned. Yeah. But what happens when someone calls out sick? Well, I, I guess I would argue, and I thought about that. The same thing would be would be true if your if your security person. As part of the security plan, called out sick. What happens? You replace a regular security person, then a police officer through the chief. Okay. How many? How many? How many security trained security people do you guys plan on There's having? A lot. There's tons available. The answer is enough. It's a big market. I don't think government dealt with security. I've dealt a lot no. with security firms, and 
is staffing. You're right? usually staffed with former police officers and they have a whole slew of people available to assign shifts. And so you're gonna have well-trained security people. That's the business that they're in is to staff shifts and people get sick and break legs and then could, could we add something that if detail is not available then a second security officer will be there the plan only says at least one doesn't say one just so you know it says at least, at one. least one yeah i mean we'll have to we just make sure there's two if sure we yeah as yeah. long as we can't don't have to close that's right. what's but, all but, but a spot understanding but that's not our idea yeah okay that's fine then then wait then Castaways LLC will hire a additional, an additional, one additional beyond what your plan already was for that night. Sure. I feel like I'm here on a two E. How do you guys want to do it? Two E. I'll defer. Mr. Chairman, I would suggest two E read if a detail officer is unavailable the licensee shall have on duty at least two security personnel no and one additional one, well, one, they, are, they have the, to have one. Right, but the point was... So at least two. Right, so right. But if, because if your if plan was to have three that night, for whatever reason, that means there's a fourth. But well, at least two the, the, the How many is an unknown on a, any particular day? That's right. We oh, I see. Right. Yeah, well, okay, at least two. Okay, fine. Okay, well, I guess with, it, with all these changes that are... Council has, has recommended is what four or five now. Uh, I guess I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve this variance with these changes. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Joyce? Uh, okay. Is that an aye? Yeah, yes, that's an aye. Fred? Yes. Yes. Variance is amended is granted. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I was going to go to you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys will keep us posted on closing? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. On sale? Yeah. In sale. That's what oh, I mean. That closing. Yeah, yeah. We know, we know. We get automatic information on that. On there. Uh, well, this board does. <laughs> no, but the, the, the town does. The town does, right. Yeah. Uh, Bob, I apologize. That's all right. I should have come to the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I will leave. I All right. I'm sticking to the blue school, so. <laughs> um, we'll go to appointments. Bob O'Bear, 7 o'clock at 8.02. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I'm not here seeking entertainment license. Thank you. <laughs> this was 7 o'clock Central Time, so yeah, we're right on time. Um, I'm here because I'm ready to close on the schoolhouse with the Frontier School District. We have a closing date set for the 20th, and I still don't have a purchase and sale agreement from the town on the uh, vacant lot containing the septic system. So now I'm sort of in a position where I need to get this kind of caught up so that I can continue to move forward with the school district. Uh, I, I guess I'm surprised to hear that. So, what, what's our plan? What's our plan in terms of getting a PNS to? Um, we can move as the board would like to. Um, in our previous discussions, we had talked about um, the desire for some sort of development agreement, and that's the last conversation. That's the last discussion that the board had. Yeah. Yeah. On that's this my recollection too. Yeah, see, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not purchasing school from the town, so you don't really 
have any control over a development agreement regarding this, the actual school. Um, it's put out to RFP without any, um, about, you know, any reference to a development agreement or any tie to the actual town. The purchase with the town is for the vacant building lot that adjoins the schoolhouse, which contains the working septic system. So it's sort of, after speaking with council and my, my staff, it's sort of doesn't really affect my sale of the schoolhouse. Or the town doesn't really have any control over the sale. But do you have a development agreement with Frontier? I do not. For the buildings? I do not. So, so does that mean that, in theory, you can do whatever you want to do? It's allowed under zoning, yes. Well, with the school, yes. Okay, but, but the, the difference I, I, I see, and, and uh, I don't know if you call this development agreement or, or not, is in your proposal to the school, you laid out uh, a, well, you showed a drawing of the yep. two floors, what you plan on doing, you showed some revenue income, you showed a, a time, time schedule of yep. what you were gonna do, what activities and whatever, for the school and for that parcel sake. Sure. But we have no idea for our parcel, other than you had a sketch of, of a rectangle building with six or eight right. units. Uh, we have no idea when that's going to happen. Is it is it after the school is all done? Is it is it the same time, or is that not even committed? Is that that's just not even committed at this point? Yeah, my my commitment is to renovate the schoolhouse into a multi-year residential building. Uh, that's you know my whole intention. I'd like to get started on that project this winter and have it done by uh, early next year. So. Is your plan to still have some of those low-income units? Yes. And, and what if we said in our in a sale of our parcel that we wanted to see some plan from you to develop that rather than just leave it as a septic field? Um, I would say that have you done the engineering and the, the, the pre-development work to determine if that's even possible? No, other, other than so I, I can't really agree to something that I don't even know if it's feasible or not. Well, can I ask a quick question there? Um, what kind of, um, I guess, assurances um, and better to write? I'm kind of scanning through with the Montague um, development agreement that Brian included in our package here. I mean, what kind of assurances? Can you give us that this will that you thought through on the plan you you gave us to consider earlier? You know, to the best of your ability, and understanding that sometimes things don't work yeah. out the way you think they're going to work out. Um, well, I'm in the process of uh, preparing the building to be listed on the National Register to qualify for historical tax credits to basically aid in my uh, development of the property. So I'm sort of already undertaking uh, action and spending money behind the scenes. So, you know, I just would represent that I'm being fully forthcoming. It is my intention to develop the property. Uh, there are some other hurdles that we need to get over and discuss with the board, uh, requiring some zoning and uh, limitations that exist currently and what my mode of uh, moving forward would be. So currently, right now, Waitley has no zoning to even allow me to do this project. So I would kick the modus back to you and say, what are your assurances you're going to give me that you're going to help me to make sure I can actually do this? Oh, oh well, I'm not a zoning expert, so I think I would certainly be. Uh, to, to me, one of the important things, I really, just to, to repeat what I think I said before when I was that person, I really like your proposal. I really yes, like that there would be some uh, low-cost housing units, that there would be small units, because so many of the units available in Waitley are just too big for people to yes. manage. Uh, so I, I, I'm not saying this out of, out of any uh, dislike of your plan. I like your plan a lot. Um, I, uh, I'm just mostly thinking of my duty to the town to make sure that um, that that is as much as possible we can stick to that plan. Um, yeah. And you're telling me that we uh, we need to work with zoning 
to actually be able to make that happen. So I guess my assurance would be that, that I would be happy to talk to people on the zoning board to take care to help you know understand what their issues are and to make sure we you know they don't think the zoning board is against having uh, you know small units uh, and some low income housing in town either. So I think there's plenty of common ground. Absolutely. On that. Absolutely. And, and not just with the board and you, but but I think with the people in planning as well. Yeah. I mean, I I'm ready to. Uh to file a, a demo permit the week I take possession of the building. So, uh, however, again, the biggest hurdle I'm gonna face is that the town is either gonna have to change their zoning bylaws, rezone this district, or a combination of both, because currently the, uh, the town doesn't permit any multifamily beyond uh, basically two units, and then there's another require, actually four dwelling units, and then there's uh, additional frontage and uh, square footage requirements for each unit above and beyond. Then there's an additional re requirement in there, which I've never seen before, requiring uh, multiple septic systems regarding uh, a number of units where I, I don't even believe that's in line with Title V regulations. Um, so there, there are some things that I mean. I'm basically kicking that back to the town and say, this is my. I have every intention of doing this project. Uh, I think it's in the financial interest of the town as well as myself. And uh, you know, my option right now is to push this through in a, a 40B situation through the the state where the town doesn't have adequate low income housing, and then basically it's a state permit that allows the work. I'd rather not go that route. I'd rather work with the town to find uh, a solution that works for both of us. However, in my eyes, that's going to be the biggest uh, hurdle in, mo in me moving this project forward in, in any type of manner beyond sort of just uh, doing things in the background. Uh, really, it's going to take some, some specific thought and consideration by the town as to uh, working through the rezoning of this property and maybe there are other parcels in town that would be subject to a similar reuse that currently doesn't exist under the zoning bylaws. So if, let me ask if, if you don't get the rezoning or the limit the number of units that you're proposing is I may be in for an entertainment license. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're still on the property. You have no, no contingency on the sale. With, with I, I would have to reevaluate my whole plan. So, yes. Okay. I, or, I, or I would go through the state with a 40B, and it, yes, may, not, it may not be the end, yes. end result that you guys are looking for, but it may be what works for me. Right. So, yes. you know, I'm just trying to be straight. You okay. know, I, I mean, I don't have any intention of trying to you know, right. do anything shady, but I, I would like to try to figure out what we need to do to actively, you know, find a solution. Right. And would, would, would the rezoning apply to this, uh, our parcel as well? Would you be going for both to rezone? Or you uh, you, well, for most one? likely, yes, because so I believe that the, the, the lots will probably become uh, one if they're owned under uh, continuous ownership. I think in Massachusetts they sort of become, become contiguous lots. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure. But yes, I would, I would look for both parcels, I believe. Why do you object to the 40B pursuit? Because um, I think it'll be more costly. Costly to you? Costly to me, perhaps costly to the town. Um, I've actually never done it. I'm researching it now, but I do believe that there's going to be significant uh, legal for both myself and for the town for review and just sort of uh, generally administer the admin time involved with the process is going to be significant, I believe. So, you know, I'm not trying to overly, you know, overburden the town with excessive legal and administrative costs to sort of oversee and manage a 40B project. Some, some, some towns do have, or they have adopted what's called adaptive for use overlay districts. Yep. And that's typical for, um, you see it, you know, when, when municipalities try to reuse old mill buildings or old school buildings where, where the original intended use of the building is likely never going to be used for that again. But the, the zoning is restrictive in the sense that it really prohibits any type of redevelopment. So towns will adopt what's called adapt, adaptive reuse overlay districts and 
what it provides is some flexibility and some flexibility and the ability for the town and maybe with with the developer to sort of tailor what what can fit there to meet the developer's needs um, keeping in mind the the impacts on the neighborhood um, but again that would have to come to a town yeah. meeting vote yeah um, I know that so. The town of Montague did that with the Montague Center School, and they've had pretty great results. Uh, they've got a waiting list. Uh, the owner of the building has a waiting list, and they're very nice, sort of higher end uh, scale units that were filled almost instantly. Um, yeah. They've done it in a few other locations around town. They've recently uh, changed some zoning. There's a golf course that uh, you know, they changed it from, I think, strictly recreational use to a, a general business, I believe, or maybe it was a neighborhood business. Uh, there's, there's adaptive reuse is done quite a bit in a lot of, you know, rural communities where we have these buildings or these real estate or, you know, times have changed and business and lifestyles have changed so that we have to find a way to uh, fit these sort of isolated pockets of, uh, land into ways that can be reused. Okay. Yeah. I guess in fact, one of my concerns earlier was the development of our parcel. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's it's good to hear that you're you're proposing to do both uh, parcels for, for zoning and whatever. I, I guess to me that would mean a commitment that you're looking at doing something for our parcel. I, I guess I would support you doing that. Yeah. I guess if you don't do that, then I guess maybe we would have discussions with our planning and zoning board to say, well, what's happening with the other parcel? Yeah. So uh, I guess to your benefit, I, I guess work at both with both parcels that way. It shows some interest that you're looking at, at doing it, whether it happens or not, or the time period, I guess that's up to you, but at least the zoning would be done. Yeah, and that wouldn't be a stumbling block for you. That, in my eyes, that's the biggest hurdle. I mean, I would like to make this my winter project uh, if if so, things can get done in that time period. Um, you know, again, the other the other hurdle is that I don't believe there's sewer uh, on that street, so I don't really have you know minimal. Uh, the schoolhouse has minimal area to to install a septic system. The existing septic system is already on the other parcel it would sort of just make sense that they, they go together. Otherwise, the, the town would have a liability with an active septic system on their property coming from the neighbor's building, which that in itself is probably a can of worms for the town. Well, then one reason it's probably on the other parcel is because of the ball field there. Yeah. That could have been why it was put there. I, you would know better than I. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, so, uh, where do we go from here? I mean, we don't want to kick this can down the road. No. Yeah. Can I just have just a quick clarifying question? I was kind of taking notes and I didn't quite get it. What exactly about the uh, zoning has to be changed in order to make the project happen kind of the way we, you, you, you wrote it? I, I, right. One thing I wrote down was the number of, um, like uh, dwelling units that can be built Currently, together. Only, currently there's only zoning for uh, four dwelling units, and then anything over four dwelling units, uh, something in here about... Uh, special permit or something. Special, well, it's, it's, it's not even allowed by special permit. I don't permit. think it's allowed. I think the maximum dwelling units for a multi... The maximum dwelling units for a multi-family dwelling, I believe, are four. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that, that's something that they, okay. oh, dare I say the word variance here, um, that something would have to be done about that for sure. Yeah, I don't know if you can give a variance for that. It would open up the town to specific challenges down the road if another yeah. developer were to come along. So, so I don't want a variance but for But that this. could be taken care of in uh, an adaptive use overlay district in a way that's a little safer for the town. Absolutely. In theory. Would that have to be a town meeting? Yeah. Yep. So, I guess my, my, I'm just looking at, the, I'm thinking about the calendar. You close when? August 20th. Um, we're not going to have a special town meeting before August 20th. And the planning board no. will be able to do their thing. So no, I guess no. what's the solution here? I take possession of the building. If it doesn't work, I give it back to you guys. The possession of the parcel. Our parcel. I, I mean, that's, I, I, uh, if, if I may. Right. right now, 
you're, what are you looking for from the town from the other parcel? That you're looking to buy the other parcel, so yes. you have use of the septic. Exactly. Would it be possible for the town to grant an easement for use of the septic pending? There is a, there is a current yeah. easement. Yeah. The, there is a current easement in place, yeah. so the building can use the septic now, even though it's not. You would not be the owner. I think it's concerned that it's not going to be able to. Ever, yeah, I'm not. I, I don't want. I won't move forward on the sale unless I have a purchase and sale on the lot. I just that's, that's as straightforward. I, I, that's guess my I, position. Right. I guess I think we should just create a purchase and sale at this point. We 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 want this to happen. Right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there was a purchase and sale in the um, in the packet here that I'm scrolling through. Yep, that was, uh, was in the yard for frontiers, I think. You know, that was the one from our, from, oh, from, from, ours, yeah, okay. um, from a yeah. client from KP Law that was included yeah. in the request for proposals. Yeah. Um, okay. So if we agree with this, or if we, we can sign this today, or do we have to? It's not, it's not. It's not for prime time. Yeah. It's not prime time, no. okay. I mean, I don't think the terms would change very much, but. Um, it's not something you want to sign this. <laughs> so is it fair to just request that over the course of the next several days we create a purchase and sale and, and send it off to you yeah my council will review it and then correspond with the town's council to get us finalized and that needs to be finalized prior to your your close i, I would like that i mean i could potentially require if, if the time is not if we can't get it done in the next two weeks then i mean i, mean, I could ask for another faith. week you know i don't think it's too much to ask you would you would just trust good faith i probably wouldn't you know not with a purchase of this magnitude for me. I, I mean, good faith yeah. is good, but it's still, I'm buying a tax bill, you know? Well, Brian, is that, is that possible in the next week or so with your schedule, or do you think we should um, wait longer? We would have to have a meeting for you to sign it. Well, can you push back your close by a week? Yes, I'm sure I can. So the next, our next meeting on the, what, the 29th? Your meeting's on the 20th, next meeting's on the 29th. If I could try to push the closing to the 30th, do it that way. I'll just say that the town would do the scheduling and such. such blame the town. I'll blame the town. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. mutually delayed each other <laughs> enough. So, in terms of us in frontier, so I think, I think we actually owe them one. So, so okay. So I guess I move that uh, we Brian go ahead with developing the final purchase and sale agreement for us to sign in our next meeting on the 29th. On the 29th. Second. Okay. All those in favor, Joyce. Uh, I'm in favor. Fred? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank and, you. Ladies. And then in terms of moving forward with in terms of moving forward with zoning. What are we looking at for that? That's conversations we'll have to have with the planning board. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you guys have a plan around stuff? No. no. So we have brought, I don't really want to raise my hand because that's not my title. <laughs> so it's something that you'd have to go through the fur card for to get a grant. I think I think we could I'm optimistic we could do it in house with yeah. you know, me and the planning board. Yeah, okay. Well why don't I touch base with you next week and yeah. you know have a conversation and then uh, we can get this purchase and sale pulled together and yep. reviewed so that it's ready for the next uh, select board meeting. Yeah, it, you know we don't have to. Thankfully, we don't have to recreate the wheel in terms yeah. of you know, of zoning. I've, I did a little bit of research before the meeting Super. to see what other other towns have had. And we also want the board by also want to consider if and maybe we don't, but this is also an opportunity to consider what's going to happen with the the center school as well, which will likely yeah. be dealing with. Should be a part of any overlay district. Six yeah, months. Sure. If we want to have an overlay district that yeah. that deals with old municipal buildings and. and well, we want to maximize. We want to maximize use and, op op and options yeah. with that. I mean, I think that that building. I would like to believe that building has more options than the, than, than the blue school had. Um, so, so maybe it's not appropriate, but it, we might be thinking along the same lines as to how we create flexibility as to what can be done. In that I think we should create that's... flexibility. I don't think we should paint ourselves into a directional corner. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right. Well, visually, it's more attractive building, if nothing else. It's so zoned, a if you're in the southwest, the blue school would be great. Well, exactly. What did you say? It's zoned as a restaurant. Right. Already. Right. So, and 
So once you're done with the school, you. we'll send you the RFP yeah. for the center yeah. school. Send, and send, and send it on over. Okay. okay. Send it on over. I think you guys will be pleased with the outcome of the school. I really do. So. Okay. Looking forward to it. All right. Well, I did you all farewell then. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, um, town hall project update. So, uh, we're pretty darn close. Um, really close. Uh, I haven't been, I gotta get in there. Yeah. Um, Thanks, David. You're welcome. Hey. We'll miss you. <laughs> you come back. Yeah, you come back August 29th. Uh. But we won't pay you. <laughs> Um, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Town Hall. Town Hall. It's, it's really close to being finished. Um, I, I stopped by there today and they were doing some, some, some uh, finishing, finishing up some painting. Um, the HVAC, HVAC units are installed and functioning. Um, we're setting up a time it's sometime in uh, mid-August to get a walkthrough of how to operate the mechanicals. Um, so I don't know, Fred, probably by the end of the month, they'll, pro they'll probably be out of there. Is that a safe bet, you think? Yes, I think so, yeah. Um, so, uh, some other that's punch exciting. Okay, that's great. Some other punch list stuff. Um, we gotta finish up, uh, we get the fire alarm online and a handful of other things, but um, we're pretty close, which is good. Have we uh, made any progress on our usage policy? We have, I was, I was going over one today. I'm, I'm hoping we can talk about it at our next meeting. Okay, um, have perfect. A, a solid draft for that. Um, the reason I put furnishings in here is because as people get anxious to get back into the building, I want to make sure we have an orderly approach as to what comes back into the building. Um, I think we want to be careful that the, the town hall doesn't become a um, the storage building that it once was um, we have limited storage space and we want to you know make make the the common areas that are going to be available for groups to use we want to I, I think we sort of want to set that um, so what I talked to what I talked to Fred about was if we maybe put together just some ad hoc committee to to kind of go through and, and figure out what's what we're going to bring back into the building um, in, involving the groups that, or getting feedback from the groups that, that we know have interest in using it. Um, you know, I, I had questions about what's going to be the audiovisual equipment in the in the town hall. And <coughs> do we need these tables or do we need these chairs? And it's I just want to make sure it's an orderly process. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, it's clear that I would probably not be on the ad hoc committee, but I can give you a little update of some stuff the Historical Society has done, and I mostly know because I was a part of it, uh, that we uh, managed to secure through donation a portable screen and a pretty nice projector. One was from Amherst College, one was from Smith College. Uh, one was, you know, Katie Edwards took care of the, uh, the Amherst, uh, you know, making the connection to the Amherst donation, and I did the same for Smith. So. We're starting to collect a few little things, yeah. um, but it's not a lot. But I think it would be bare bones, audiovisual, for so, you know people were holding a meeting there. Yeah. Okay, that's that's good. Uh, speaking of furnishings, about well, some of you may have been aware we had a chair cleaning exercise last week because uh, there was no need to bring back the. the well, 85-year-old chairs that were all dirty and grimy, so we had a uh, cleaning session last uh, Thursday afternoon to clean all 157 chairs that have been cleaned. So we're going to have clean chairs on the second floor. Uh, and that's one of the goals, of if whatever chairs we put on the first floor, we want to make sure they're clean, not just the grungy ones that were there before. So. so that's what we're also looking at, making sure the stuff is looks nice and pretty in the and a new looking building. Okay. So. Well, thank you to, to you and anybody else who helped with yeah. those chairs. Yeah. That was, that was, must have been a big effort. Yeah. Um, what else? So, so a reservation restriction. So are you guys good if, if, 
Fred, I, and a couple other people try to figure the furnishing situation out. Yeah. What about usage? I, I, I'm good on that. Okay. Um, I think it relates back, we'll try to talk about the usage policy um, at our next meeting. Um, I did receive a request from the Historical Society. There's a letter in here, uh, a proposal about, about how the arrangement might work with the town. Um, I, I don't know that, that we need to discuss it in too much detail tonight. I think there's some, some things that I could work out or try to work out with the Historical Society. Um, and then we can have a discussion with the board at, at our next meeting. Okay. Okay. Restriction? I don't have it. Okay. Next week, next meeting? I hope so. Okay. No promises with Mass Historic. Can I, can I ask, is that the delay? Because it keeps coming up with this our own commission. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I heard back from them today. Oh. Yeah. It's being reviewed by their person, by their assistant director is their um, staff attorney. So, um, and there may be an issue or two that we need to deal with. So, um, it's been a extremely frustrating and lengthy process. They're the ones who insist on this thing. Yes. Okay. Um, Wait, um, wait, the elementary school purchase a pre owned generator. So, I was hoping that I could have a, uh, an idea of, of total cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to hear about stop signs? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to Sorry, off topic. All right. Um, um, I was hoping to have um, Mark Lucio was trying to get me a cost for what he would estimate the installation to be. This is the generator that, mm -hmm. that Mike Miles got. And, um, he was, yeah. said he would hope to have it to me by Monday, and he got it back, and he said that the vendor he was working with had uh, spec the wrong equipment. So I don't have a, a, a final cost estimate here um, to present. I hope, was hoping I would, but I don't. Um, so I don't really know how we want to proceed. I know I can ask I can ask Mike to hold off um, if he's willing uh, to hold off on that because I, I I had said I would hope I would have an answer to him after this meeting, but I'm not sure that I will. Okay. Yeah. Is there a need to do this before school opens? Is that any impact on the school? Um, that question's never come up. I, I think it could be done while school's in session. Okay. I don't think that there would be a, a, a huge impact on, on the operations. Because where is it going to be placed? Well, it's up for discussion. Um, when, in my conversations with Keith, we were, he was thinking it could be, in my conversations with Keith and Mark, that it could be installed uh, almost behind that garage that's behind the school. So the farther away oh. from the school, the better. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was at least the initial discussions we had. Uh, I admittedly, I know very little about a generator, mm -hmm. um, so I would, you know, anything that I'm, anything that I'm saying, I'm. I'm so where does where does the hookup occur? Repeating what? Do you, what? Do you get, do you get a trench? You would trench it, yeah. Okay. And the town, Keith said that that's something that the town would do. Okay. Um, the wild card here is the installation costs. Um, the, the town appropriated. There's 58. Uh, Fifty-eight thousand eight hundred dollars in the account right now, um, from a generator that was supposed to be purchased a long time ago. Um, right. For whatever reasons that fell through, um, but that's that's sort of where that is now. Um, we had a site visit to, to go see the generator. Myself, Keith, Bob Lesko from the from Frontier, and Mark Busia met us out there and. and they seem to think it, their recommendation is that it, that we it's something that we would move forward with. Okay. But I still, I, we kind of still need to know the installation costs to make sure we have enough money to install well, it. Well, okay. I think the electrician has enough information. He knows what's in the budget and he knows what we have to spend for the generator. He just have to subtract those two numbers, right? <laughs> 
I, I, I that might be too much. Be plenty yeah, of money available. Pay more than forty grand. grand. Yes, I. I will fall out of this chair. You could do that, right? I would think something could happen. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. All right. So, um, so do we want to wait? Do you yes, want to, we want to wait. Okay. We want all the information. Okay. Franklin well, County's what? Is that or, or is the other option, Jonathan, if Brian gets a reasonable amount to install it, why? Well, right. I mean, that's a fair why point, right? Why don't we go let him go with it? Well, right. As long as he doesn't go over budget. <laughs> And if right. it goes over budget, again... I don't see us waiting another two weeks. Right, what's the point? We just yeah. give you permission to yeah. use your best judgment. Okay. Okay. If Keith and I agree and it's under budget, we will... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Agreed, Joyce? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We don't need to vote on that. Okay. I don't think so. No. Solid Waste Management District. MOU? So two MOUs. Two of them. Here they come. Um, household hazardous waste day. The town each year the town budgets a thousand dollars, so residents can dispose of household hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. Franklin County Solid Waste District um, is the one who operates that, and this is something that we've done every year since I've been here. Um, residents can dispose okay. of okay. hazardous yeah, waste free charge. Good, no, good. Um, All right. Um, and what, what's the budget for the third party inspection? Third party inspection each year, the, the, the transfer station and uh, the landfill and the stump dump, but we're just talking about the transfer station today. Mass DP regulations require that it be inspected by a third party. I mean, Franklin County Solid Waste District has done it in the past. And for both of these, I should mention, I, I asked, uh, I, well, I emailed Fran Fortino to make sure that it was his recommendation that the board sign these, and it is. Okay. Stop signs. So we'd be looking, there's an email in here, but you don't need to read it, from Keith asking, um, but I know that he had installed stop signs at these locations, on Gray Oak Lane and Long Plain Road, and Eastwood Lane and Long Plain Road, and for those to be enforced, the select board needs to approve the installation of the stop signs at those locations. I would make a motion to approve the stop sign at Gray Oak Lane and Long Plain Road and the intersection of Eastwood Lane and Long Plain Road. I second that. All those in favor? Joyce? Yes. Brad? Yes. Yes. Is that okay? Yep. Why don't we put one at the yield in front of the center school? Get rid of the yield sign, put a stop sign there. In front of the center school? Coming from coming from North Street. North Street. Probably uh, trucks don't want to stop. We got to stop if there's a car coming. I know. Yeah, but I think those those V kind of intersections are usually yield. Oh, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. Like every I live up there, and they're always blowing horns and screeching. It's quite a. Mess. I, I drive through there as you can imagine. Yeah. All the time. I. No, it's just a thought. I mean, it's something we could talk to Keith about. We, we could get a traffic incidents report. Yeah, something to think about. Are there any town administrators? Oh yeah, no. I got good ones. You know, every time I don't give them, one pub, one member of the public gets upset. So that's what he comes here all night for. He sits and waits in anticipation just to hear what I have to say. Uh. So we have the results back from the audit for years, um, fiscal years 15, 16, and 17. And uh, the audit went well. Uh, the town did very well. So kudos to the accountant and the uh, treasurer. Um, you have the draft management letter in your packet. And there were, well, essentially there was, they found no deficiencies in, in the, uh, the finances of the town. A, a big improvement over earlier years in this decade. That's what I've heard. Huge, ginormous improvement. Um, there are, you know, there are, there are some recommendations that the auditors have talked about in terms of what the town can do to implement um, some best practices uh, for some of those areas, but um, I'll, I'll get the final reports out uh, once, once we receive them back. So that's good news. Oh, that's good. Um, better news. The long-awaited manganese filtration project 
is out to bid. Are we nervous about what? I just thought that they would never come. To be quite honest with you. Uh, we'll, we'll see what comes in. What comes in for, um, for bids. And again, that's financed through the uh, Massachusetts Clean Water Trust. Okay. Um, that the town's having a loan for it. It took up a third of the page of the group yeah. of the recorder. I saw it. And when your bids are doing huge. That? My name was under it. I did not run that ad. I saw your Just name. so you know. Uh, 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 my ads are much more succinct and a lot less costly. Uh, 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 yeah. Speaking of water, what's the status of the merger? Good question. Uh, let me finish one more thing here. I'll get back to it. Okay. Um, and also the uh, the cemetery project for the the phase three restoration of the grave markers, which is funded thirty thousand dollars in CPA, is also out to bid. Um, so we will uh, see what we get back for proposals to do that as well. That's um, stone restoration, grave marker restoration in in the East Whaley and West Whaley cemeteries. Um, I believe that the restoration, the center cemetery is completed according to the cemetery commissioners. Okay. So, um, water merger talk. Um, it was a meeting between the, the, well, with the water merger committee. Fred was there, I was there. Water commissioners, representatives from the water district were there. Um, and Uh, the question that came out of that meeting was um, how fast the board would be willing to move this along in terms of whether whether any votes for funding, however it's uh, in whatever amounts, whether that should happen in the annual town meeting or special town meeting. Um, you know, we've the, the water department has been working with the engineer and they, they in in some cases with the committee to, to put together a proposal for the for the technical connection uh, but the question is uh, as for most things is how do we fund it and when do we want to present it to the town for funding I'm always a believer in doing this at regular town meetings it's a big deal and we want maximum participation unless there's a reason Right, and let's face it, 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 uh, you know, do, do we miss a, a season because yes. we have to wait until yes. the end of April to find out? Right. That's, that's one of their comments or concerns was, yeah, they, they, you'd miss one, say, construction season if you waited till annual town meeting. So if you're delaying it for another year, I, I don't know, right. I guess you never know what's going to happen with their water system for the year, so. Yeah. But you know we do have a lot better communication than we have had in the past, like really in terms of the Connect CTY. We can notify people of special town meeting and get more people to show up that they're interested in it. So I guess I'm not dead set against um, something like that being at a special if there were some big advantage for it. But in the absence of an advantage, I'd say we should aim for special town meeting it gives us enough time to have all our ducks in a row and get all the stakeholders in line and get people well educated about what the issues are. That's my concern is the well educated piece choice. So you're saying we, yeah. we all we've all learned that we need to do more than we thought we needed to do in cases where my guess is it's not going to be a small ticket item. But it depends on how many years you want to fund it. Uh, and, and I guess the, I was pleased that the progress that's being made on, on the, the two, two departments getting together and, and coming up with a strategy to present to the voters. Uh, the district had a slide presentation the other day of overview of what it is, why they need it, the impact on the water department. And the water department had figures on, on their capacity uh -huh. and, and uh, and demand oh, stuff. Like and, coming out yeah, yeah, it is. And and uh, the plan is to have a, an information meeting before either a special or annual town meeting. 
to present voters with, I mean, we're, we're talking a half hour to an hour discussion maybe uh, on this to present to the voters of what, what they're putting together. Uh, that's one of the things I guess Brian and I wanted, to, and I especially wanted to, to have numbers, something to present to them rather than uh, a thought or an yeah. idea that it's, it's good to combine, so let's do it. No, we have numbers and support and impact of what it's going to be. Right, which uh, is important. Which, is, which is important and which is what you need to convince the voters to go for. Now what we don't have maybe, I'd say now, is any any reaction from Finance Committee. Uh, Paul Antea is a member of, the, of it, but he wasn't at our last meeting where we talked some about options for funding and whether it's a three year, five year, or whatever we're, we're looking at. So uh, that could be the next hurdle to go over is what does finance committee want to do with it? What are their reaction? And also what are the sources of funding that pay for it? Right, because right, there are options, I'm guessing, potentially. Right. Well, well we threw around the term, the, the common term that was thrown around a lot during these meetings was, well, the town will pay for it. Well, that's, that, that, sounds, that sounds unclear to me as to whether it would be would, it, right. would the debt service payments come from the enterprise fund? Would they come from is it something that comes from, you know, as part of our annual budget? Would it come from free cash? Would it come from stabilization? You know, there's... Right. And, and that's really gets into the, the nitty gritty of, of... And is it fair to say, is it, is it fair to say that external funds are really not even remotely an option? For these types of projects. For these if, it, if we could show, if it was made the case that it was supporting new, you know, whether it was meeting a, a housing need or an economic development need, uh, those types of things, if that's an easier case to make because the funding is very well. I, I, I actually do think that impro it improves our our ability for sensible economic development. And, and, and growth because we have one water system, we, we're all, I, I, I do think you can make a case. Is it too much of a stretch for a grant? I don't know, but I, I think this merger will demonstrate that Waitley has a stronger plan and awareness of how to smartly grow or plan, plan its growth. Again, I'm not sure that's enough of a, of a, of a story for a grant but it's definitely true. I mean, we can't really economically develop that area of town if there's not adequate water pressure for fire suppression. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I think, uh, Brian, I recall a while back, FERCOG asked if we were interested in doing something or asking their help in, in merging the systems and they were going to do do something. Did, did we ever agree or with them to do something on that? No, we still have we still have a small grant through the community compact. We still have a grant to um, do that. That was earmarked for helping us figure out how to wrap up and merge together the the affairs of both entities. So so what are we doing with that grant? Um, before we do that, we want to make sure that we're actually going in to, to merge the two systems. Right. And can we use that grant money to construction? Help, no, to help us find other, other money or, or mm -hmm. develop a proposal to, to seek other funds? I'd have to look, but I'm, I'm doubtful. Or to have FERCOG do that for us? If the, uh, FERCOG's not involved in They're not involved. This one. They were involved in the. In the the budget document one, but they're not involved in, in this one. In the compound, okay. I mean, it, it's worth taking a look again um, to see what's out there. Uh, yeah, I just think that we want to make sure that we have exhausted all avenues for other additional funding before we go to town meeting with a dollar number because the yeah. question will get asked, and it's appropriate to ask, what are our other options? And then on top of that, we can then proceed with the, and here, based upon what we know about external opportunities, here is how we think it can be funded from internal sources, be it, you know, wh whatever. Yeah. Bond, stabilization, what have you. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Anything else? That's it. That's it. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Bye. Good night and good luck. <laughs>